Bulls will go on the attack here first. So a chance for them to shake whatever jitters might remain for the 19-year-old freshman, the left-hander, the wonderkin, the redshirt freshman, if you will, who has seemed so mature in handling all the pregame hype that has gone on. Fred, remember this. Championship games are very long games. Both of these teams need to handle the pressure by concentrating on the present tense. Don't worry about the hype or the hoopla. Concentrate about what's going on and focus in on their assignment. That's the best way to play your game. Here is a story, ladies and gentlemen. Sebastian Janikowski, who came to the United States, Daytona Beach, from Poland. He's a junior. This will be his last collegiate game with Florida State. He was one of several Seminoles who was caught breaking curfew this week. However, unlike several others, he will start tonight because as Coach Bobby Bowden said, we have international rules for him. So here is Sebastian Janikowski, who is one of the best at putting the ball into the end zone. Eight percent of his kickoffs into the end zone and now Michael Vick and we asked Michael what do you need to do early I just want to go out there and move the ball on our first drive you know even if we move the ball a couple of yards and you know give it two or three first downs we have to play you know that's all that that's all right with me I think we just have to come out there and make a statement let them know they're not going to push this around so Michael Vick wanted to make a statement here early Chiron Stiff is his tailback. And a false start right to begin that game. Something that plagued the championship game last year out in Tempe, Arizona. When these fellas take more than a month off, you tend to have that sometimes in the early stages of games like this. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. A negative on the first play of this championship encounter. Brent, not just in these big games here. Remember, the Orange Bowl, Alabama had 19 penalties in that football game. Emma Johnson, who has replaced Hall, comes off to fix right. And they do run stiff. Base handoff. And let's meet the Nokia starting lineup for Virginia Tech. Their offensive line, average height, 6'4", 289 pounds. They will be called upon to pick up blitzes here tonight. Paul is injured, but he will play, as we heard from the coach. Andre Davis is the big play man, 100 200-meter champion. And in their backfield, they have rushed for almost 2,000 yards and 22 touchdowns with Stith leading the way. They do have a running back by the name of Andre Kendrick, a change-up back out of Lynchburg. The straight eye formation. Vic escapes. Free. All the way to the 39-yard line before Derek Gibson tackles him. A 25-yard gain. Gone are the butterflies. Well, there you see right there the wild card in this football game. I mean, it doesn't take a genius. When you have this type of quarterback, you get back out in the pocket. You've got one play. Now you've got the second play, the busted play, the on-called play. And Brent, this might be the best running back that ever played. And by the way, he can throw really well. The best running back at quarterback, quarterback right? You're right. I mean, this guy runs like a running back and throws like a quarterback. Now he, folks, he could well be the best running back on the uh, field here tonight. He might be. From the shotgun for the first time. And again, trying to escape that pressure. Dances back the other way. Quick, strong, powerful, heading for the first down marker. A look at this defense that now knows it has its hands full here tonight. Reynolds, with that speed, is going to have to catch someone who's faster than he is, and that's Michael Vick. The linebackers are led by Tommy Pulley, a junior from Baltimore, with 109 tackles. The secondary was juggled here tonight because Thomas is healthy, Hope is healthy, and that's why they put them out there. So far, Virginia Tech hasn't blocked anybody. 
No one's got open. They haven't gained a yard on the called play, and Michael Vick has driven the ball past midfield. And our first substitution defensively, Sean Key, number 18, checks in at free safety. So it'll be second down and that much for Frank Beamer's Hokies. Here's our senior from Miami, 6'1", 190. He runs the 40 and 4'3'2". One of the faster Knowles in that backfield. Offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell has been Virginia Tech except for one year since 1987, the year Frank took over the program. The Michael Vick led Hokies near midfield. And the Knowles haven't been able to catch the young quarterback yet. Davis in motion to see what they're going to do. Durden went with him. There's an option look and Stitt on a toss, bolts free. Stitt swings inside the 30. Down at the 26-yard line, Brian Allen, but it's 26 more yards and a very impressive you're, opening drive. You're seeing the Georgia Tech game plan right here. Spread them out, use the play-action pass, use the quarterback, and now the sprint option. But look at this cutback. Stiff is a big load, and he runs at tacklers. He doesn't try to dance around. He's the real deal and matched up with Vic. He is a tough load for this Florida State team to handle. You look at the option going to the wide side of the field. There's the pressure. There's the pitch. And look at that cutback. Perfect. Number 56, Roland Seymour checks in at defensive end. One of those who broke curfew who didn't start. So this is his first play. Let's take a look at the Dell game solutions before everybody thinks I made these up after the game starts. Vic needs Stiff. And Stiff needs Vic to make this running game go. Both of them are important. And win the broken plays. You've seen it already. That's a big one. For Florida State, it's lock and load. Lock on the wide receivers man to man. And load the line of scrimmage to stop the running game. And Michael Vick. That was fullback Jared Ferguson's first carry of the game. Keep this stat in mind. Tech has rushed for 65 yards here. And Florida State only allows 98.8 a game. So keep that one in mind as this evening unfolds. Vick, the left-hander. Plenty of time. Davis on the juggle. Down at the 12-yard line. It is first down. Hokies. I told you, no stage fright for this guy. Crossing route. The tight end is going to come this way. Davis is coming the other way. Watch the big guy cross. He's trying to pick off. That's that crossing route. The pick route, that's what you do against that bump and run coverage. A lot of crossing routes if you have the time. Michael Vick gives you that time because he gets out of the pocket. David Warren checks back in at left defensive end for the Knowles. And a whistle prior to the snap. No idea up here. Please reset the 25 second clock to 25 seconds. There was no flag. I didn't see anybody moved. Uh, and, uh, you know, for a guy, Michael Bix said our first drive, we'd like to just make a couple first downs. He may put points on the board. And remember, they were penalized yep. five yards first play. prior to the first snap. Yep. From the 13 yard line, stiff the tailback. They keep Davis in motion. Here is Stith pounding the middle of that defense of the Knowles. All the way to the six-yard line and a quick attacking left side of the offensive line. This is the number one running play. Pulling the guard, isolation play with the fullback. It's an iso load. Watch the guard. The left guard will pull. Here comes the fullback. They wrap it around and stick it right up there. Tyrone Stith reminds me of an old teammate of mine, Brent. Ernest Viner out of East Carolina. Oh, he was He's a good that one. type of a player. You know, when you got Vic down here, Gary, you can roll out over to the right side. He's such a good runner if they want to put some pressure on the D, but they've had success just running right straight ahead and not getting the speed involved as they do here. And that time, Pulley jumped in from his linebacking spot. Number 29 made the first big defensive play, if you will, for the Knowles in this game. 
It's a little bit different for Florida State. I don't know, and Mickey Andrews, their defensive coordinator right there, if they face this type of power and speed from the tailback and the quarterback. They face Ronald Curry and Joe Hamilton, passing game and mobile quarterback. This is a power and mobile quarterback. Seymour back in at left defensive end for Andrews defense, third and short. Extra running back and Stith dives toward the first down marker and it'll be close. Beamer waiting for the signal down on the field. And the chains will come out. Look at that. Taking the clock down. First drive, very successful, keeping that defense off the field. Over five minutes already. That much for the first down on fourth down. Well, first decision. I think, he sent, thinking about it. I think he sends a message to his team and goes for it. There is absolutely no indication that he even thought of Shane Graham on that sideline. Andrews sets his defense, and here we go. Vic, Ferguson, Kendrick, and Stith in the backfield. Why not a quarterback sneak with the size of that guy? He might try to pull him off with his count. Does it. Hits him fast. Kept the ball. Nothing doing. Fumble end zone. Florida State covers it. Florida State recovers the fourth down fumble in the end zone. It was Corey Simon, the All-American nose guard, number 53, from Pompano Beach, Florida. Messed up play, obviously. Looked like they were going to try to run the option, and the ball was kicked right at the end. Watch. It looked like Vic Rink turned the wrong way, and then the ball is kicked back into the end zone. Michael Vick turned the wrong way on the option. Look at that. There's the strip at the end of the play. It was Gibson that stripped the ball and then watched the kick by Gibson. Didn't try to do it, but it went into the end zone. The first big break goes Florida State's way. And we're scoreless. Timeout in New Orleans. Big players and big games. Corey Simon, who led the defensive lineman with 84 tackles, including four sacks and 21 TFLs, has just made the first big play of this championship game. Now 27-year-old Chris Winkie. His chance for that ring that he could not compete for last year. And it is the handoff to Travis Minor out to the 25-yard line. How much does it mean to Chris Winkie and how satisfying is it, we asked him, to have this opportunity here tonight to play? I told myself that, that I was going to rehab for eight months or however long it took me to come back for this opportunity to play for a national championship. I've got that opportunity today. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to leave that ring in New Orleans. I don't want to give it to anybody else. And he completes his first pass. And Peter Warwick has now tied his reception output of last year at the Fiesta Bowl as the Seminoles keep going without the huddle here and now they will regroup. Now they'll draw back and the substitution package Kendra and, and leads the way. Brent, you're right. They wanted to go no huddle but because of the third and short it forced them into a different type of a, a grouping in this football game. Here's Peter Warwick and what he has done in big games and already he's come up with that one fake toss and Winky rolling in Warwick's direction. He's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Can he get him off into the middle of the field? Warwick goes up. Got it. Bubble. No. Incomplete. Peter Warwick let one get away in the early going. Both teams on short yardage plays tried to go for the big play. 
one on one. Hey, this is the matchup. You're all American against Charlton, the guy that did uh, midget, excuse me, the guy that did all of the talking in this football game to start with. The ball's up. You would expect your your all American receiver to make that catch. Good hit at the end of, end of it by Anthony Midget. But Ike that Charlton. Went for everything. Very, excuse me, but Ike Charlton standing back deep with Hall being injured. And the punter, Keith Cottrell, is a good one. These two have met before in high school. It's a low punt. High bounce. Couldn't escape the headhunter. Now at the 30-yard line, a 44-yard punt, a two-yard return, and a hit by Malcolm Tatum. Timeout. People are beginning to think of the automobile not just as a family vehicle, but as a personal and individual means of transportation. The throb of a powerful engine. Now for a moment, imagine yourself as driver of this automobile. You really have to drive it. Fester at a time. And Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. From behind the Virginia Tech bench, Coach Foster, the defensive coordinator, talking to his troops over there on the sideline as Michael Vick and the offense get ready for their second series. And remember the first time they drove 10 plays. 73 yards, nine of them were running plays. You gotta believe they've gotta get 88 into this attack soon. And Vic rolls hard, left-handed, incomplete. They tried to hit Davis, and a reminder that ABC kicks off the NFL playoffs. Bruce Smith, the former Hokie, and the Buffalo Bills head to Nashville to face the Red Hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. Game one of our wild card doubleheader. It'll begin at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, all part of Super January on ABC, culminating with the Super Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. Second down and 10. A defense with the lock and low. Look at, here's the lock down here. Two guys, man to man, all over the field, load up at the top. A late pitch, stiff. Driven out of bounds that time is Sean Key, number 18, the senior from Miami, puts a pad to him. The option play will simplify the Florida State defense. Remember Ralph Regan, great coach, coach of the year, Ricky Bustle, Ralph Regan, they know each other, they've talked to each other on the phone, 35 points. How'd you do it, Ralph? You were the coach of the year. Spread them out, run the option, and then it'll simplify. That's what Frank Beaver told Ricky Bustle, and Ricky Bustle is getting into this game now. Terrell Parham, number 86. One of the wide outs for Virginia Tech on third down. Stiff, first down. Gary, I guess my question to you is this. Can he keep it up? through an entire four quarters oh, against bet. the defense. This guy has carried the ball a lot all year. He's a workhorse. Plus, they have Andre Kendrick, their backup, who has also carried the ball this year a number of times. And, and this is two guys that can put yards on and attack the line of scrimmage. If you're a good running back, you trust your offensive line. That, that hole will be there. That's why Stiff is hitting that line full speed. Here's first down, and they... Keep him lined up in that eye formation with the fullback Ferguson in front of him. Play fake, and they bring the wide receiver off the corner to get the ball in number 18's hands, Emma Johnson. The Nokia Sugar Bowl is interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and more while you watch the game. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com right now while you watch this game. And we have a flag down on the field. Five yard face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the line. First down. He's 
spotted on a previous play, Michael Vick. Yeah, Brian Allen right there. Get off me, and I think that was Michael Vick. Bring it on. Nope, that wasn't Michael Vick. That was Brian Allen. Got a little hit on Jarrett Ferguson, number 27. And Ferguson, the hard-hitting lead fullback, has probably been banging into those linebackers pretty good the way this running game is working. Stith has rushed for 46 yards. It's trapped on the end around. Tries to dance free. When he turned to hand the ball off, he almost put it in a Seminole's belly. Well, that's how the game started. And you can see Virginia Tech knew it was going to be that way, and that's why this game plan has been so open. We've seen bootlegs, we've seen options, we've seen reverses. They know that if you come against this Florida State defense with a one-pitch offense, just a fastball, they'll eat you up. Tommy Pulley again coming hard for the Knoll defense. From the gun. Trying to dance and he won it because number 44, Gladly Jennings, the sophomore from Miami, is too fast and won't let him out. You see Michael Vick, he wants to stay in the pocket. He wants to be a drop back passer. Because of that, he bustled the coordinator. He's gonna have to force him to get out of the pocket with calls. You've got a defense that tries to keep him in there. You've got a quarterback that wants to prove he's a drop-back passer. So now the calls has to force him out of the pocket and do it on the run. Third and 12. The big play, fellas, number 88. They have to find a way to get it into the speedster's hands. He's off to the top of your screen, left side of the formation. Penalty flag on the play. And Vic dances free. Battling for the first down spot. But there is a flag. You know, it's interesting when you think of the fact that Michael Vick is a freshman who is taking on this Florida State defense here today. And certainly he has attacked with his feet as we await Shaw's decision. It is against Vick, but let's go back and show you what these quarterbacks did now remember as freshmen that's remember joe hamilton played a great game as a senior we go back to 96 he got knocked down knocked out hung in was only four of 11. tommy frazier did pretty good for nebraska at 93. danny werfel injured and knocked out came back later as a senior to won a national championship bernie kosar gary your old buddy yep. he probably did the best of all he did it but it took him that one game to really get the feel of this football team before he really got that game and won the national championship later it, it, for that football team you know he was coming into that florida state game you, know, you got, can't simulate this type of speed inside the florida state brings as a result of the mistake it is third and 17. the hokies need to reach 30 yard line davis still going in motion he has to dance away. Now he fires for Davis. What a throw. Oh, baby, what a strike as he finally gets it to Davis. 18 yards. But did you see that rocket launcher? And did you see the beginning of it? This guy throws so well with flat footed. Watch his footwork in the pocket. Davis is to the outside coming across. Watch him dive. Get it out of the way and throw it. Doesn't even step. He is so good at getting rid of that ball without stepping back, Brent. I think he's a little more accurate and a little more effective when he doesn't step into his throws. He just throws him flat foot. The first appearance by number 82, Ricky Hall. He's off to the left side of the formation. He broke a bone in his foot. His first snap of the game, stiff, taken on aggressively at the line of scrimmage. Tommy Pulley again, the junior from Baltimore, and he's been all over that line of scrimmage. My feeling going into this game is no matter what Coach Bobby Bowden said to this Florida State football team, he couldn't convince them that this was Tennessee or Nebraska. They couldn't believe that Virginia Tech could have enough athletes to play with them. Believe me now, they believe this team can compete with them. Frank brings Hall back over to the sideline. Davis is out to the left. Johnson's down to the right. Second down and 11. Deflected. 
and incomplete as Warren, David Warren, out of Tyler, Texas, breaks across the line of scrimmage and got a ball. Very difficult for a left-handed quarterback to get it by this guy. It's a little easier for a right-handed quarterback. He comes out, now his left hand is closer to the line of scrimmage, and he lets that thing go, and this ball right here gets it out of him. Look at that. Now, if he was right-handed, he had a little better angle to get it by that defensive end. Third and 11. Dick surveys the defense. Andrews shows blitz. Coming after him, and he's in trouble. That's the second sack of Michael Vick by the Knowles here today. Some of the fellas get it's the tangled first, up down there. Excuse me. First all-out blitz by Florida State. They bring eight people, man-to-man to, man to the outside. Gibson going to come right here up the gut. That's the guy that isn't blocked. Look at him come. No way you can dance around that one. Gary, that's what Donnie Nealon did when I was looking at the West Virginia yep. tape. They would gang up on the shotgun in third and long, and West Virginia came with eight. And remember, the Mountaineers are the team that pushed the Hokies to the wall and almost won the game. So Florida State obviously took a long, long look at tapes of that game. Fourth and long now, and here's the punt by Jimmy Kibble. He's a good one. Look at that, but... Right off the body of a Hokie, a 38-yard punt. They are marking it down right there, no, the it's officials. A it's a touchback. And it's now the signal yep. that it's coming back out to the 20. So let's take a break here. We are scoreless in the BCS championship game at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. How do you measure success? Inside the Louisiana Superdome, we get Chris Winkie and the Knowles with their second series. Jeff Cheney was very effective against Florida and is a little bit better receiver than Travis Miner. Checks in and Winky walks right up to the line to identify where the defenders are standing. And that's the experience of Chris Winky, recognizing what he was looking at. The blocking is called and Winky's pass is incomplete. Let's take a look at the Dell game solutions for Florida State on offense. It's going to be spread the field and play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Find a guy and throw it. And they want to make Miner, Travis Miner, a major. Winky needs some help. Virginia Tech, it's hide, hinder, and hit. Hide your intentions before the snap. Hinder the pass routes and Winky and hit both of them all game. From the gun. Incomplete and misfiring that time for Ron Dugans. He got to Jermaine Springer. First, his only completion was three yards, and that was to Peter Warwick. And uh, we asked Winky if he had freedom to change all the plays at the line of scrimmage tonight. A big part of our offense is going up to the uh, to the, to the line of scrimmage without a play. Um, no one knows the play. I'll put us into into the right play uh, once I try to read the defense. So uh, there is a lot of freedom, probably more freedom than than a lot of college kids in, in terms of of running the offense. The advantage you get with a veteran over the middle hot. at the 35-yard line. He comes back to Dugans for the first down, a 15-yard gain. There's the calmness, Gary, yeah. of Winky, too, after misfiring on the previous and, pass. And you have to do that. If you're a passing team, you can't lose confidence in your passing game or your receivers. It's just the first quarter of this game. Just keep going out. That's where that baseball mentality for Chris Winky comes through. You experience a lot of failure in baseball. First and 10. Pump fake. Looking home run again. Hello, Mr. Warren. In a foot race. Hello, end zone. Knowles strike first. Sixty-four yards. Winky to Warwick. Two youngsters driven by different motivations here tonight and both determined to help Bobby Bowden finish his first ever unbeaten season and win his second championship. 
Sebastian Janikowski, the left-footed specialist from Poland on the field. And the king of Bourbon Street makes it 7-0. It's a slant with a skinny post. Peter Work is matched up to the outside of the formation. Right here, watch him come in and then skinny post it. Nick Sorensen, an ex-quarterback, is the mismatch. That's who they're going after, the free safety right there. They know that Sorensen doesn't have the speed to get there. You spread the field, you look for your mismatch, and you attack the mismatch. Florida State leads Virginia Tech 7-0. Look at to the unspoken communication between the quarterback. There it is. You got to have the slant. You got to fake the slant. And there's the skinny post. And you do it against the slowest defender, a guy who played quarterback. I know it's quarterbacks. We can't play free safety against Peter Ward. So Chiron Stith goes back deep, but he probably won't get a return if Janikowski kicks it true to his form. Hangs this one a little bit short. Returnable. Stiff coming out. Their best running back. Powerfully to the 24. Time now to take a look at our Nokia best connection. Let's go back to the 1995 Sugar Bowl. Virginia Tech was here against Texas. Brian Still, a 60-yard punt return for a TD. That was Tech's first score of the game. They went on to score 28 unanswered points. They beat Texas 28-10. And according to Coach Beamer, that was their biggest game ever until tonight. Brent, first drive for the Hokies, nine plays, 70 yards. Their last drive, seven plays, 13 yards. Florida State's getting the feel of the game. Staying in that base eye formation. Andre Kendrick running back. And let's check in with Jack Aru. Well, Brent, after the Virginia Tech Hokies got burned by that uh, Peter Ward pass, Bud Foster, their defensive coordinator, gathered the whole defense around and told them, look, it's only one play. He says, remember what our credo is here. We take it one play at a time. Don't worry about it. We'll go back out, and we'll make, a, make up for it next chance. Bud Foster, outstanding defensive coordinator, ladies and gentlemen. He has done a great job. Steve Spurrier wanted him down in Gainesville, but he was so loyal. There's a missed snap. Pick running for his life, going in the wrong direction, oh, and that's probably intentional grounding for sure. I did not see an eligible receiver, and now the referee throws the flag, and uh, the Hokies will be penalized. See Michael Vick, he's holding his left wrist after he threw that football too. That's why you got to be a grounding on the offense. That was that was Jamal Reynolds. He's the fastest of the defensive linemen, number 58 for Florida State. Folks, as a defensive lineman, he runs a 4-4-3-40. He's a junior from Aiken, South Carolina. Don't know what happened, but Michael Vick was not at all prepared for that snap. Sometimes the center calls the snap, but the quarterback has to let the center know that he's ready for the snap. Gary, that was a loss of 20 oh, yeah. yards. And, and not only that, Brent, you got to look at this left wrist for Michael Vick. Helen Hawkins, the fullback. There's the pitch to Kendrick, and he is swarmed all over by the nose to bat. This Sunday, the wait is over. All new episodes of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, starting at... ...with Jack. It was just... The offense, penalty is declined. Fourth down. Yeah, more and more penalties for Virginia Tech. You know, I agree with Jack. It was just one play, but it was quite a play, though. And when you get bombed like that, and it kind of takes apart your game plan, everything you've been working for to stay deep and not let Michael Vick do it, that could cause problems. Reggie Durden is back deep, but don't be surprised if the Knowles don't bring a little heat here on Jimmy Kibble. 
He's an outstanding punter. But this team can really front run. They got it. Scooped up by touchdown. Florida State on a block punt with Jeff Cheney. Their backup running back. Picking up the block punt and dashing into the end zone. And now, look out. Brent, two programs that turned around by blocking kicks. Florida State did it first. Frank Beamer copied that guy right there and emphasized kick blocking. You're so right. That can get a game out of hand quickly. Tommy Pulley was down there in the middle of things. I don't know if he deflected it. Certainly Cheney scored, and now Janikowski makes it 14-0. There is Pulley being congratulated over there on the sideline. So from all indications, the linebacker. Coming right at you. Good snap. Coming right up the gut. And it was Tommy Pulley. That's who got it, the linebacker. This has to be disheartening. The two things that Virginia Tech thought they would be able to do well is not give up the big pass play, especially to Peter Warwick, and not get kicks blocked. Tommy Poley, who announced that he's coming back. He says he needs one more year to play to be the linebacker he wants to be. with his work cut out now. Janikowski. Pounds this one to the end zone, folks. Well, we told you that ABC kicks off the NFL playoffs. Bruce Smith and the Buffalo Bills head to Nashville to face the Red Hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. Now, also, during that game, ABC is going to announce the starting lineups for the 2000 NHL All-Star Game during the broadcast. Of course, that's North America versus the world. Those of you who follow the NHL, you know that North America is going to have to stop Pavel Burry <laughs> of the Florida Panthers. Now, you just know. You got some Red Wings that can join you know my Panther it's up there? It's finally hockey season. It's James. <laughs> and getting closer by the snap <laughs> down here, my friend. On my head. First down and ten. Going downfield is Vic Watts Johnson. There was contact. Penalty flag. Durden pushed his hands into him, and I think they had lost contact with the football. Reggie Durden panicked right at the end of that play. A 15-yard penalty. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's go down to uh, Jack Aru. Well, Brent, remember on that last offensive series, Michael Vick was complaining with his left hand. It was right down here in the thumb area. When he came off, the trainers looked at it, and Michael Vick refused treatment. He went to the headset to be debriefed by Ricky Bussell and went back out. He still has had nothing done to that area. Floater downfield and look at Andre Davis 
and he underthrew him. One of the few times I've seen him underthrow a receiver that bad. Now I am really wondering about that thumb, oh, Gary. I've I, never I seen so. him underthrow yeah. a receiver or throw a lollipop like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's two of them. The last one was not well thrown either. And Andre Davis, well, he was in the open by about five yards and gaining on the play. Maybe he didn't want Michael Vick, anybody, to look at it because he knew something was wrong with it. Remember, Brett Favre. remember the graphic we showed everybody on what happens when freshman quarterbacks play this defense call our friend joe hamilton up there at georgia tech and ask him call danny werfel right here in new orleans in fact he might even be at this game here tonight come to think of it second down and ten it's a tough night now stiff hard hitting running back in trouble you cannot cut back against this defense there's another penalty flag down sean key makes the stop but there is more yellow I think two plays have lost the focus of Virginia Tech. The fumble in the end zone and a long pass to Peter Warwick. Virginia Tech has lost focus. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll repeat second down. Oh, well, let's throw in a third one, a block punt for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. That's put killer. That, that is, that's when you lose focus. you got to block at least from inside out and make that block come from the outside. The hand is the big story in the game. You cannot beat Florida State just running the ball. You have to attack the bump and run. Well, Gary, also, it's pretty much been the base eye formation against this team. Do you know how many formations Steve Spurrier used in the first half alone against these guys? And you have got to try to influence them with formations and a lot of motion and things like that. That's just from the fellas who have played against this kind of speed on defense. Part of the story, I think, there, Brent, is not having Ricky Hall. It has limited them. Taking their third receiver, he's already in the game, Emmett Johnson. So, you go down to your fourth guy and go three wide outs, that's tough. Gary, what about if they have to, and I hate to even mention this at this stage in the game, and uh, probably shouldn't, but what about Dave Meyer if they have to go to their backup quarterback? Watch Dave Meyer. He's a drop-back passer. On the Five-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. There's Ricky Hall. You know, the game is played at a different pace especially on a carpet. When you're matched against the defense with as much speed, Corey Simon down there in the middle. He's the fellow who recovered the loose ball in the end zone, made the first big play on that opening drive, an All-American nose guard. He came back his senior year, first shot to win the championship. The gun, the pump fake, and dropped in underneath, and they used the fullback, Jared Ferguson. The Knowles were concerned about that, but we did have a chance to ask Corey Simon now how do you think Vic will handle the speed of your defense? I like to think that he hasn't seen the speed that we have on this team. Um, you know, a lot has been said this week by Virginia Tech players about our speed. Uh, but, you know, it's one thing to watch them on television, but it's another thing to play against it. It is awesome speed all across the line with this team. And it's not just speed, it's speed with size. They got a fast defense for Virginia Tech, but not with this type of size. Second down and three, and Vick's straight back going deep. He's got his man open. He's got Davis, got him. Touchdown. The home run hitter comes through. Andre Davis just motors past Cleveland Thomas, and it's a 49-yard scoring strike. And does that play ever lift the spirits of the Hokies, their coaches, and their fans? Brent, he was that open on the play when he threw the knuckleball. He ran by Thomas, like one guy was a sprinter and one guy was running backwards. It was a five-yard beat, 15 yards down the field. Shane Graham adds the extra point, and they cut that deficit in half. You said, Speedster, he did look like a track man. He is. He's the Atlantic 10 champion at 100 and 200 meters. I mean, he can flat fly. 
And there he is, matched up. Lock and load. You have to attack it. And look at the room out here. He gives the quarterback, Michael Vick, to throw it in the box out there. When you do that as a receiver, you give that quarterback an easy throw. You fade to it. Perfect strike on the deep ball. That was real easy. Here, that'll be there all night long. Oh, yeah. You got it. If you're playing Florida State and you let them take your wide receivers out of the game simply by playing bump and run, you lose. You have to attack that coverage. 80 yards in three plays. I think if you get beat that badly one time, you might try to anticipate the guy going deep. Throws a duck for an incompletion and comes back and throws a touchdown. Just a huge play for Michael Vick to Andre Davis. Kibble, their punter, handles the kickoff duties. Jermaine Stringer and Nick Maddox, the freshman running back, deep for the Knowles. And Kibble responds to Janikowski's challenge. It'll come out of the 20-yard line. Florida State offense has to be licking their chops. Last time they were on the field, they hit the long pass. Now they get back out on the field and say, it's our turn, our sir. Chris Winkie says, you just let me, Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, right there in the middle. Give me a chance to spread out the field. I'll find the mismatch. Final seconds of our opening quarter here in New Orleans. Big plays galore. Winky. A one hopper. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Lynn. Well, Brent, last year when the Florida State, some of those played in the Fiesta Bowl, they were concerned about the long layoff. This year they had one more day in that layoff between the last game and the bowl game. They changed their routine up, and the emphasis on this year's training camp coming in the bowl game was to make sure they didn't have the rust and the timing. That past the war showed that they still have the timing. They want to keep their drives going right here, Brent. Inside handoff, but there is a penalty flag. Jamel Smith making the stop, but the flag was thrown. Travis Miner, the ball carrier. Brent, as you look at the penalty against Virginia Tech, already Bud Foster has put in the substitutes in this football game. Corey Moore went out to start this series. Darius Monroe, a backup defensive end, has come in. They think in long term. If you're the defensive quarter, you know you're going to need Corey Moore to rush in the fourth quarter. Five-yard penalty, second down. They are outstanding with the cadence count at Florida State. And they will mix it up in this football game because they're going to use the silent count. They will come up occasionally against that defense for Tech and have no call. They'll fake the snap count a few times and try to see what Virginia Tech is doing, then call an audible, and then snap the ball. Moore with only one tackle in the opening quarter, so the Knowles are doing an outstanding job against Torrey. Tackle pushes him outside. They run up. They use his speed to their advantage. They design the play to bring him upfield. Then they slide in underneath. Hawks makes the stop. The first quarter comes to an end. We had three touchdowns. Warwick started it. Then it was the block punt by Pulley. Cheney for the score. Finally, Davis responds. We'll continue after this message. And a word from our ABC stations.
Nokia Sugar Bowl. So Virginia Tech down by 14, responds with a 49-yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis. And now we start the second quarter, and it is 14-7. Florida State with the lead. Bobby Bowden looking on from the sideline here. First and 10 for his offense. Complete. Well, Charles Schwab will make a contribution to the scholarship funds to each of the universities represented in the Bowl Championship Series, the BCS. And, of course, this is the BCS title game, the two teams that were ranked numbers one and two. Ron Dugan's making his second catch. Here. Florida State still going with four wide receivers. Virginia Tech has their regular base people in there. Linebackers and safeties trying to match up. Minor, and it is read perfectly by Jamel Smith. Let's take you back a few days ago. Let's talk now about Corey Moore, their All-American defensive end. Take a listen to this. Look, I'm going to tell you one time and one time only. Get the camera out of my face, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm telling you, I'm going to punch you. All year, he's been their emotional leader. He was trying to tell his team, we're not backing up from anything. I think he said that after the fact. <laughs> Third down and three. Winky gun. Got Dugan's brakes free. They won't catch him, I don't believe. A defender with the angle can't get there too fast. Dugan's 63 yards on the quick strike. And Florida State goes back up by two touchdowns. It's spread them out, find the matchup, play one-on-one -on -one football. The matchup this time was Dugans against a linebacker slash safety to the outside. Boom, Midget takes go for it. You see number 40, Ben T Taylor come across. Midget gets beat inside. You see the safety linebacker can't get there for help. Mismatch. Janikowski again. Against the team ranked number one in the NCAA in scoring defense. The Florida State Seminoles put 21 points on the board early in the second quarter. By the way, perfect throw. You talk about a strike right in there. Not bad coverage, but this linebacker, Ben Taylor, couldn't get there. Mr. Vick, it is your turn. for 153 yards and his second touchdown pass and he's gone deep he's played long ball but Vic has gone deep once and remember he has the fastest of all the wide receivers here tonight well he's proven that hasn't he <laughs> right back there football game both teams finding out the other team came to play and have some people that can make plays well I think Corey Moore might be a little shell shocked from what they're doing down there in the trenches well, because the, they've got a plan against absolute him. Absolutely. They're Quick chipping on him. And run right at him when he comes up field. And using backs to pick him up if he gets free. Kick off. And they're coming out with Stiff. Breaks free. You said he looked like Ernest Miner. It looks like he's got a heart like Ernest he had really as does. he powers out to the 33-yard line. A reminder, coming up on the National Carbonell Halftime Report, something special. John Saunders and Terry Bowden are going to be joined by Clemson head coach Tommy Bowden, Terry's brother, and the University of Miami's Butch Davis, two coaches who have faced both Florida State and Virginia Tech this season. And Virginia Tech alum and current Buffalo Bill Bruce Smith is going to join. That should be some show. You had breakfast with had, the Bowdens. I had breakfast with all three boys, and I'm proud to say I didn't pay. <laughs> they all make more money than I do. <laughs> Kendrick, the running back after the final return by Smith. He's buried in the middle of the line with Jerry Johnson, the senior from Fort Pierce, Florida. That's down West Palm Beach way. I think Mickey Andrews would like to get into a position where he could blitz. But when you see Davis, that speedster, go deep, one play changed the game, you know, well, on one hand, I know the blitz will get there, 
But on the other hand, I don't like my matchup out on the outside with that guy. Emma Johnson's 18. He runs a 4-4-2. Number 88 runs a 4-2-9. Don't hold him now. Dancing. Now firing. High incomplete. Davis was defended, and there is a penalty flag thrown. On the 46-yard line, there's a penalty flag. Thomas was working against Andre Davis that time, and uh, let's see who this is on. Yes, it's against the offense. I could tell by the celebration by on the Knoll sideline. Yeah, exactly. Look at quick out to the outside. You see the receiver going in motion to this side on the top. They try to run a quick out this time, go long ones. Look at the help deep. That allowed the corner to come underneath the throw. Vic had nowhere to go. Watch how this thing good. Hey, this is kind of cool. You got both guys in. I can watch this all day like this. Two wide receivers. And then right at the end, you get the shove when the ball's in the air. Brent, I wish you know, they looked you know, Gary, that close together. It, looking at that, it was almost like Andre was intent on pushing it. Well, once than, the ball didn't go, I think he's blocking downfield thinking Vic's going to uh, run okay, the ball. Okay, sure, sure. That's what that yeah. was. Exactly. That's why it looked that way. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Shiron Stiff, their running back for the Virginia Tech Hokies, is icing down his right knee. It's slightly sprained. They're going to try and work on it here and send him back out. But now you're playing with one less wheel at 100%. Yeah, and that is a big wheel, too, Jack. We don't have to tell anybody that. Been watching oh, that 200-pound junior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. That would be just an enormous loss. They come back with the inside head off the Cullen Hawkins. Well... Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. And other than if you got any tickets, this is the question <laughs> I've been asked more than anything else. What is a Hokie? They oh. are the Virginia Tech Hokies. And we'll come back with the answer to our Aflac trivia question on what is a Hokie later in the broadcast. Florida State now has countered. They got their backup linebackers in the football game as Mickey Andrews says, I want to rest my guys also. Need 23 here, Gary. Vic buys time, fires high, tipped, incomplete. And Virginia Tech forced to punt. That's the play Michael Vic has to make to win this football game. Coming out of the pocket, he buys extra time. Look at these defensive ends come upfield. Offensive linemen push him right by. There's Vic. Now make a play. Make a play. Throws it high. And the Knowles going for the juggler. Here's Peter Warwick. Back to return this punt. And Pulley blocked the last punt. Cheney scooped it up and scored a touchdown. The second touchdown by the Knowles. And so he rushes this one. That sometimes happens after a blocked punt. One hop. Warwick says, let's go. Won't catch him. Hello, end zone. A 59-yard punt return for a touchdown. Let's go back to the top of the broadcast. The coaching staff at Florida State said we have got to find more ways to get the ball into number nine's hands than we did last year out in Tempe. Job well done so far. Brent picks it up off the bounce. Peter Warwick's only touched the ball two times in this game, just like last year. The only difference from last year, two touches, two touchdowns in this football game. That was a great block by Malcolm Tatum, who has been a terror on special teams. Number three really opened the door for Warwick. Janikowski adds the punt. How good is this return? This is the first punt return for a touchdown against Virginia Tech since September 17, 1988. That's over a decade. And now, Florida State opening up huge daylight, 28 to seven.
exclusive brought to you by Charles Schwab. When we created a smarter kind of investment firm, we also created a smarter kind of investor. ADT, the power that protects more families than any other security company in America. AT&T, one rate, seven cent plan. One simple rate all day, every day. Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. And Sears, and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. With Gary Danielson, Jack Arood, and Lynn Swan, I'm Brent Musburger, the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the National Championship. And right now, it is all Florida State. They lead it 28-7, and Peter Warren with two touchdowns tonight. And right here is Randy Moss, his old roommate right there from Florida State. Imagine that, two freshmen, Peter Wark and Randy Moss. I don't know what's scarier, the football playing or them being roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's the line of it up so far. It's a high kickoff, and Kendrick is coming out. Big hole, now it's Kendrick's turn. To the nose, 37-yard line, a 63-yard return for Kendrick. Kendrick, the backup running back, is going to take it right up the gut, right up the gap. A couple good blocks, he sets up a couple good blocks, and then he explodes. A high school quarterback passed for 4,000 yards in high school. Frank Beamer fell in love with the guy, said he's a runner, but a winner will find a place for him. They found a place for him as a backup running back. Remember, he has to play right now because Jack told us his stiff is out with that injury. So after running 63 yards, he probably said in that huddle, Michael, you keep it. Yeah, Do he, something he else. Gonna get it. It's gonna be a pass. First down and 10. If I was the Dells, I'd be looking for Vic right now. Here he comes, rolling hard left, drop it, and the tight end reaches back and makes the catch. Stumbles at the 30-yard line. Browning win, the sophomore from Jonesville, Virginia, his first catch. Sunday. On ABC, Dorothy Hamill leads the team of the USA's elite skaters against the world's best. The lovely Michelle Kwan, Todd Eldridge, and Elvis Stoiko put their reputations on the ice in the Kerry Lotion USA versus the World Figure Skating Challenge Sunday at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific, all part of Super January on ABC, culminating with the Super Bowl in Atlanta. Can I cheer for one person to get to the Super Bowl? Is it okay if I do that? You can have your old partner. Come on. If I ever get there, just cheer for me. Dick Vermeil and I <laughs> did Florida State in the Sugar Bowl a few years back. Here comes Michael Vick in trouble. Dance is free. Great balance. And that is the third sack. Well, earlier, folks, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. What is a Hokie? We don't know. Jack Arud, you got the answer for us, partner? Right. Actually, a Hokie is nothing. It's a word from a, from a cheer that was founded in 1896 by a student. He wrote it, won $5 in a contest. Through the years, though, the Hokies have been known as the Fighting Gobblers. They've had turkeys as mascots. Now they have a Hokie bird. Now, the one thing that's always happened is they've kind of thought that maybe it was a turkey. That's the noisemaker that the Hokies use. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> gobble, gobble, my friend. Third down, Vic throws high on the run. And Davis may have crashed into something over there on the side. There may have been a stanchion. I'm not sure what it was. It looks like the field goal kicker. Let's go quickly back to Jack Aru. Well, Brent, surrounding the 25-yard line are these stanchions. Because this is an NFL area, and that is what was here standing up and Davis ran into it. That's what he ran into right there. Uh, listen, Jack, I, I've been on sidelines, though, where I haven't seen that, to tell you the truth. I mean, and I, I've stood on NFL sidelines where I don't necessarily see that standing there. That's a little dangerous for me. Fif 51 yard, let's see now. See the end of it, hits it, rolls over, go right into it. So this will be a 51 yard field goal attempt for Shane Graham. It's the fake. Fumble. Knowles have got it. Caleb Herb is the holder. Going to run the option to the outside. Ugh. Don't like that. A tight end running an option to a kicker. 
against this type of speed, it better work perfectly because if it doesn't, those guys are going to close very quickly. And indeed, they did close. Even on the pitch, it looked like me anyway, like he was defended. So it's 28-7, and it'll be Florida State's ball next. Time out. with head coach Bobby Bowden in this second quarter, Bobby. Virginia Tech looks shell-shocked. How do you go for the juggler? Yeah, we'll see. We'll try. I sure don't want to, I don't want us sitting on the darn thing. You know, we got to go after him. You were talking about the mismatch being the wide receiver, but you've had a great game plan against Corey Moore, stopping him from pretty incredible. Yeah, we've got to, uh... Flea Flicker got him again. Warwick. 33 yards. Talk about a confident coach. He can do an interview and run a flea flicker at the same time. Here it is, the wide receiver, Peter Warwick. Pitch it back, kind of hesitates. It's not there deep, and then smartly comes across the field. It's a read. Both Winky and Peter adjust their routes. They know each other, work together every day, and they do it properly. He will go down for the first time. The Nokia Sugar Bowl is interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and more while you watch the game. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com right now while you watch the Nokia Sugar Bowl. David Pugh made that stop at defensive tackle as you look down on the Louisiana Superdome. Here it Here's the problem. Safety covering a receiver. Safety covering an outside receiver here. Look at that. Warwick, three catches for 100 yards here tonight already. The second sack, and Jamel Smith, the linebacker, brings Winky down. And, and I guess there's the safety belt. When you got safety on receivers, you better get to the quarterback, but it's very dangerous. If you don't get to him, you've got a wide receiver on basically a linebacker. So Coach Bowden, graciously over uh, speaking to Lynn Swan, he <laughs> felt very confident on that pass, but then the uh, series bogged down for him. You don't suppose know, that was part of it, did you? And the first time out used by the Knowles here. Florida State Eight. only had 10 guys. 8.02 left in the first half. Timeout, 28-7, Florida State. two remaining in the second quarter and Florida State leads it by three touchdowns 28 to 7 this is third down and about 29 yards to go for the Noel. Winky been sacked a couple times on this series moves the pocket and now he'll take off well short of the first down slides down the 43 yard line well, you take a look at one of the many quarterbacks that come out of Florida State, you'll see another one in the second game of ABC's wild card playoff doubleheader. The Detroit Lions head to Washington to face running back Stephen Davis and Brad Johnson, the former Noel, their starting quarterback. That's game one of the NFC wild card playoffs, and that coverage due to begin at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, all part of Super January. And here is fourth down with Keith Cottrell back to punt. And Ike Charlton, his one-time high school nemesis, back deep to return for Virginia Tech. They were coming after one, and so quickly, Cottrell fires it toward the end zone, gets a great hop on it, and Tatum down there again. What a night he's having on the Florida State special teams. The press was on, 
Cottrell fired, got the English, Tatum did the rest. Things are not going well for Frank Beer. You look at the statistical comparison in this football game, you see a football stop, a line drive one stop right on the goal line, basically. And you know things aren't just breaking well for your football team as Michael Vick comes on again to try it. This is a great attacking spot against Beamer's offense for Mickey Andrews and the Knowles defense. Stith is still out. Play fake and Vick's going to try it out of the end zone. Fires underneath. Second down. And Vic got nailed in the end zone. It's climbing up. They tried to go deep to Davis again. Play action pay it class coming off the line of scrimmage. Vic waits too long. Need to throw it. A little bit of flash and then gets sandwiched right at the end of it. Play action pass. Looking down. Boy, you can feel your clock. The mental clock in that pocket when you're in the end zone, that ball should have been gone. Jerry Johnson, number 92, way out of the way. Here's Kendrick, small hole, dove out a couple of yards. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Well, Brent Stith is out for Virginia Tech, but so is starting weak side linebacker number 29, Tommy Foley. He re-aggravated an MCL sprain in his left knee. Put a brace on it, wrapped some tape around it, tried to run it to go back in the ball game. But the doctors have sat him down, said they will take him inside at halftime and reevaluate it then when they have more time to look at it. Brent? Bobby Rhodes, number 49, who has played a lot this year, replaces him in trouble again, got a fire in a hurry. High. The heat was on. What a play. David Warren out of Tyler, Texas. Coming after the quarterback. What an athletic play by David Warren. He backs, backs up Roland Seymour playing left defensive end for Florida State. Watch this coming from the right side of your screen. Half roll, here it comes. Whoa. That ball was just let go as he let go. And, and nice job by Warren not throwing him to the ground. This time Reggie Durden back deep and Kibble without much room. You have to assume they're going for the block though. <laughs> Hangs it out. Durden runs it down. The 46. Out of bounds on the far sideline. It's a 13-yard return on that hunt. So Michael Vick with his hands full in New Orleans. Here's your Tostitos team comparison, <laughs> friend. <laughs> you know what this means? It's not right. high school wrestling. Riding time means nothing. <laughs> right? Score points, baby. That was the 1960s. So how about this one? The Knowles with 16 plays have scored 28 points. Looking for another one. That's how you do it. There's that ball minor, and it's read perfectly by the inside lineman, Carl Bradley. He's a good one. 298-pound senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, if Corey Moore is shell-shocked, it hasn't stopped him from trying to rally the troops. He gathered the defense on the sidelines and said this. Look, we've been down before. We've been down several touchdowns before. Remember what the coaches have told us. Take it one play at a time. Then he growled and get your butts back out there and play harder. The only way you do it, you can't <laughs> stop, that's for sure. He knocked on your door and he was an agent. Would you open it? <laughs> <laughs> and Miner, Dashen, Branson. And makes it to the 32 yard line. That's just about, oh, maybe nine yards to go. Right, there's so here. much you want to say about a football game. You know, I think another factor in this game is the turf two games that Virginia Tech struggled in was Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Pittsburgh threw for over 400 yards. West Virginia took them down to the last second field goal. Both of those games were on the turf. It looks to me that Florida State is a little bit quicker and a lot bigger. Third down and nine. They're rolling the pocket against the Hokie Rush and Winky 
going to be sacked for the third time. Now, this is the one thing that the Virginia Tech defensive coaches preached all along. Keep the heat on Winky. Foster said, get to him. Start breathing on him. Start bringing him down. He'll throw high after that. Yep. And you can see the game plan. Dan Kendra, the fullback, number 10, by the way, a former full quarterback on this football team. He's got the chip block on Corey Moore. Didn't get enough of a chip off him that time. You got to get a more of a chip than that. The Knowles are concentrating so hard on Moore that now they're turning some other folks loose in that defense well, is what's happening. I don't Moore understand. with only one tackle in this game, and Carl Bradley has proven to be a monster. So here on fourth down, and again, they're going to try to press it. And Cottrell with the answer. Drops one toward the goal line, and it goes across. It'll come out on the 20-yard close, wouldn't it? Well, you know, coming up during the National Car Rental Halftime Show, Nokia once again has a special show. Joe Theismann there, formerly a Notre Dame and the Washington Redskins. He returns to action for the first time since his retirement as he tries to help the man on the right. Bob Motorhack win $2 million. Stay tuned for the Nokia $2 million challenge. Let me help everybody. Joe was the guy on the left. <laughs> Just if you haven't seen Joe in a while. Hey, that's Joe. Let me help everybody right there. I'm going to tell my friend Jack Aroot, don't give him the microphone, Jack. You'll never get it back. <laughs> First down and 10 on the option. And look who's back. Stiff. 17 yards. It was going to be tough enough for the Hokies to take on these Knolls with Ricky Hall, Rick, with Ricky Hall and Tyrone St Stiff. Now without him in this football game, you can see the difference when Stiff is in the football game. Here comes that option again, and look at that truck and trailer. There's the truck, there's the trailer. Just follow your guy. That's nice. That's old time football. Bo would love that one. Truck and trailer. Stick with your block. 61 yards for Stiff. And that is the Hokies' first first down of the second quarter. 3.29 to go. Come back. Pads a popping in New Orleans. Jerry Johnson. The Knowles told us that they were going to use 25 defensive players at least in the first half of this game. They have been on this stage before. Bobby Bowden and his staff feeling that they are by far the deeper team. And over the course of a long, long evening, especially with the defensive linemen. It is very important to rotate your players. Halftime tends to run long in these situations. Second down and nine. And a penalty flag flying, a free play. The Knowles were offside, and Vic makes the most of it. With the speed, he breaks free. Got an angle, Vic pushed out of bounds by Ty Cody, number 27. I've really never seen anything like him. I mean, he's not running against Temple here. He's running against Florida State, everyone. Watch this. Jumping off sides to the outside. Vic does a little spinorama right there. Now watch this cutback. All week, Florida said, don't, State said, don't let him cut back. There's the cutback. Now watch the speed. 4-3-3 three, three speed, good block by the tight end right there, Browning win, and look at that acceleration. The Knowles use a second time out here with 2.31 to go. Florida State leads at 28-7, but Virginia Tech is threatening. 175 million Americans watched a grand party 24 hours amazing and enthralling seven continents a global epic and now one video ABC 2000 a celebration of the new millennium call 1-800 call ABC Sugar Bowl with 231 left in the second quarter Michael Vick, the electrifying redshirt freshman quarterback coming off a 43-yard run, trying to put a second touchdown in the end zone here for the Hokies before the intermission. Second time in the red zone, just barely. Remember the first time, a fumble. Stiff. 
15 yard line. He's a big time running back. Yep, right? he is. I asked Ricky Bustle, the coordinator, about him, who at coincidentally coached Ernest Biner at East Carolina. And I asked him, can he catch the ball? And he said, and because Ernest Biner was a great receiver for the Cleveland Browns, he said, actually, at this stage, he's a better receiver than Ernest was at the sta same stage in his career. Second down. The play fake and Vic rolling hard to the left. Complete inside the 10 yard line. Derek Carter, the junior from Smithfield, Virginia, with his first catch of the game. What a program reminder. He ruled the ring and he bowed to no one. The world premier, Muhammad Ali, king of the world, next Monday, right? Delivered. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And a warrior hits for the sideline. They faked the ball to him on this bootleg thing. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what happened. Fake it to him. Corey Simon, yeah, that's it. Corey Simon comes inside and puts it right on. Helmet to the knee. First down and goal. Vic changing up. Kendrick. his way to about the four-yard line before he's brought down. Strong open run by Kendrick. Derek Gibson and Jamal Reynolds in on that tackle, but Kendrick was pushing the pile a little bit there. Yes, he is. End. He's got to come through. He's got to be the guy right now. Frank Beamer without two of his stars, Stith and Ricky Hall. On top of that, it's a punt block and a punt return for touchdowns. Vic going to keep it for the end zone. Touchdown. Could be a long night with Michael Vick out there. Incredible. Talk to the people at Virginia Tech, and they say, we had 999 pieces of the puzzle already set. Michael Vick was the last piece of the puzzle. Brent? That's a huge piece, though. I mean, that, this guy is a big-time player for anybody. He's going to make them that much better rushing the ball and throwing the ball the way he does. Graham, perfect on the extra point. Coming right at you, the option. Down the line, and Vic saw the daylight immediately. Gibson jumps outside, and he dashes for the end zone. And Michael Vick's running leads the Hokies 80 yards in seven plays, Gary. And now Michael has run nine times for 71 yards here. And that's what everybody for Virginia Tech has told us about Michael Vick. Raise the standards. Raise the big-time plays against West Virginia when they had to have that final drive. A minute 15 to go in the game. No timeouts. That's when Michael Vick played his best ball. That was a huge drive. And he did it with that busted play. Remember... We talked about what was the keys to the game. It was busted plays. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, this is what both teams are playing for. This is the Sears National Championship Trophy. It's worth $30,000. This piece alone, the Waterford Crystal made in Ireland, takes three months to produce. It takes about four months to win. Don't bobble it, partner. That's valuable down there. Last year, of course, it was the Tennessee Volunteers. Won it out in Tempe. Beat the Florida State Seminoles, or without Chris Winkie. Suffered a serious neck injury against Virginia and missed the Knolls' last three games. Now he's back, trying to win a national championship. In Springer coming out for the Knolls. Upended short of the 20 yard line. For the first time all game, I think you'll see the Knowles now play it conservative and go in at halftime 28-14. Your chances of running the field down with 31 seconds, only one timeout, not very good. If anything surprises me, or you, Gary, in the first half, it's the fact that Virginia Tech has rushed for 171 yards here yeah, in the first but, half. But I'll, I'll bet more than three, probably three quarters of them have been on busted plays. That's how good Michael Vick is. You got it. 
look at this. It's got to be the draw. Play. Back in the as gun. It, doesn't look like it. Running back's way it really wide. Cheney, pretty good receiver, takes the inside handoff and slips out to keep the clock running. It'll stop on the first down. Ben Taylor after a 13-yard game. Chris Winkie's looking to the sideline. He wants to go deep. You can just see him. He wants to throw the ball down one more time. Six touchdowns scored here in the first half of this BCS title game. Well, with Janikowski, you might only have to get to about the 40-yard line to let him get one of those booming kicks. Bringing the yeah, clock down, they're going to let him run out. That's very smart. And then take their lead on into the locker room. Well, Florida State leads it 28-14, but Michael Vick showing you that he's not going away here tonight. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Well, Coach, you got a 14-point lead, but even when things are going great, I know there's something you don't like about what your team is doing. Tell us what that is. I don't like it because we had great field position down here and maybe could have put them away and did nothing. Turned around and went backwards with it. I thought uh, that, that hurt bad, and we got to get the momentum back. We get the ball in the second half. we got to get a decent return and go get something done, get the momentum back. What's your message to your ball club about maintaining the intensity in the second half of well, this not, game? Well, not only the intensity, but the contain on Vic. How in the world do you contain that guy? I mean, he's like, he's all, it, that's, that's the key. If we could contain him, we could beat him. Coach, thank you. Talk thank to you in the second half. <laughs> Bobby's not doing anything. Uh, send him on up to the booth. <laughs> He's pretty good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Coming up next. And here is the first one. A kickoff. Florida State gets the ball to start the second half, leading it by two touchdowns. Springer and Gardner back deep. Gardner coming out from a yard in the end zone. Battles his way to the 21-yard line. And uh, welcome back, everybody, with Gary Daniels and I, Brian Musburger. Gary, what do we expect here in the second half? Uh, I think Florida State is going to forget all those trick plays, the shuffle passes, the rollouts. They're going to drop back, find the matchup, and throw the football. Were you as surprised as all our coaches were about the performance of the special teams for the Hokies? Absolutely shocked. It was the one thing that Virginia Tech couldn't have go against them. They knew they were up against it with the talent of this team. And then have the, the special teams go against it, that was disaster. Shotgun. Swing deflected away. It's a lateral. Corey Moore. That was a lateral makes his presence felt on the first play of the second half and then points a finger to Peter Warring like this one's not over. Yeah, and, and, and again, that's the type of plays I don't think for Florida State needs to run. What are they doing? Just drop back. Here you got Peter Warwick right here. They're going to try to run one of these crazy screens, a bubble screen. Look at that. Ball's thrown backwards. Absolutely good, good call. And the All-American snuffed it right out, and Peter Wark got right on the ball. Corey actually took the play off, but no need to call those type of plays. Throw it downfield. And Gary, it resulted in a 16-yard loss. Back from the shotgun again. Incomplete, and that was miscommunication as Ron Dugans broke downfield. Well, let's take a look at the Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter first half stats. You're talking to see Frank Beamer said it was just four plays, and he's right. The turnovers, though, you know, there is the big thing. The special teams and the turnovers, something you would think, coming into this game, Virginia Tech said, listen, if we play our game, we can stay in it. So far, they haven't played their game. It's third and 26, you know, three and out to start this. Absolutely. And good field position. Certainly gives the Hokies a huge lift starting the second half. Rinky swings it out to Miner. Miner in a foot race, breaks out. Oh my goodness. They let Miner out on third and 26. He bails them out with a 28-yard pass play from Chris Winky. Florida State was willing to punt the ball. They just wanted to get it out of the end zone. Mark Rick says, I'm not going to gamble here. Let's just throw it out to the flat, give it to Miner. But Virginia Tech, so nervous about those receivers, nobody locks on the back, and all of a sudden, you're out of a problem. Bud Foster shocked. 
third and 26, so it is first and 10. Winky with that inside handoff to his running back this time. And Miner twists his way to the 38-yard line. Back up off defensive lineman coming in the football game for Virginia Tech. Tech has done a good job. The backup, the second down lineman for Virginia Tech play about a ratio of two-thirds to one-thirds the play from the starters. Here he comes. On second down, Winky fires high, and it is complete for a first down. Robert Morgan, the sophomore from East Point, Georgia, makes his first catch of the game. Linebackers lined up over receivers. You always have to be aware. Chris Winkie, aware. Here comes the linebacker off the slot. Boom. One-on-one -on -one coverage. That's the offense. Until that stopped, you don't call anything else. Look at it. Here's a safety out here on a wide receiver. There's a mismatch. Take it. Ball out to the oh, Hit the man coming through the formation. Loose ball. Winky gets it. Winky dove back after it to make the recovery. And I think it was Anquan Bolden, the freshman, exactly right. coming through the formation. And the ball hit him. And lucky for the Doles, Winky recovered it. What do coaches say, Brent, about these type of games? You see the ball, exactly right, hits number four, Bolden. It's not the number of brilliances that win it. It's the number of mistakes that lose it. So far, you can see the game is unfolding that way. Second and 15, and now they roll the pocket hard to the right. Winky in trouble, dropped by Bolden. Third down. Don't understand. Chris Winky is not comfortable doing that. Drop back, throw an eight-yard pass. Here you come, rolling out. Here's the guy right here. He's supposed to get the end man on the line of scrimmage, pulling the offensive guard and upfield. Cyrus puts it right into his face. Linebacker Jamel Smith, number 46, coming hard. And now they go back to a third and 15. Remember, they bailed him out on third and 26 a few minutes ago. This is incomplete. They will punt this time. There's a look of unease. In that man's face right now. Michael Vick scrambling down the field. Foster's defense after letting him hit him for a third and 26. Comes up that time on third and 15. And the Hokies with Ike Charlton, who returned two of Cottrell's punts for touchdowns in high school down in Florida. Low snap on the bounce and gets it off. There is a penalty flag now. Charlton at the 20. On the 34-yard line, 14-yard return, but the penalty flag is back at the line of scrimmage. Now, we have an SEC officiating crew in here tonight. I think Virginia Tech declines this. The ball at the 33-yard line is good enough. So we'll take a break. 12-28 remaining in the third quarter. Noel still lead it, 28-14. Chris Winkie is thrown for 216 yards. And take a look at Michael Vick down there, Gary. Yeah, 84 extra yards in rushing That's, uh, at Purdue was 173. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I think you're on the money. Kept me <laughs> eligible. First down and 10. <laughs> Shotgun for the redshirt freshman. Fires complete. Davis. Vick takes another lick. Yeah, David Warren. Number 99, he's been the guy coming from the backside. 
We've got boxes coming all over on that one. Let's just, David Warren came from the sprint out. He still came from the backside and made it. Play, Michael Vick gets it off just in time. Davis with four catches for 80 yards, but 49 of them coming on his long touchdown. And Brent, Michael Vick has been hit 17 times so far in this game. Here is number 18 coming up. Late pitch, no, he didn't. And Kendrick dashes for the first down across midfield, and Vic avoided the hit that time. Good looking option run that time for 12 yards. Let's take a look at that previous play. Vic's going to come out this way. Here's the receivers to the outside, and here's Warren from the backside. Get to see all the participants in this play. This is how long it takes. Don't have much time for your quarterback. Here it comes from behind. Never sees that blind side. Perfect throw to the outside leg of the receiver. ABC's triple look here tonight yeah. at the Nokia Sugar Bowl see, and a chance work. to look at a lot of the combatants you feel at the like same a fly. time. You know, you get to see all those things in different areas. Half a field to work with now for Vic and the Hokies. They're down two touchdowns. Davis comes in motion. Play fake. Vic rolling hard. Needs to avoid the sack. Beats the tackler. Back to the middle. Incomplete. There was a receiver in the area. <laughs> the, the, no He's special. thought they had him this time. He is special. He is special. You're right. Let's take a look. We set it up this way. The Dell Game Solutions. Vic needs Stiff. We saw what Stiff brought to the game. Obviously, Stiff needs Vic. He has to do it. Win the broken plays. That has been the story of the game so far. Virginia Tech and Michael Vick, the lock and load has not worked. Man-to-man -man defense to the outside has been burned for a touchdown. The, the play of the game has been Michael Vick outside of the off offense. Might lose here tonight and might go on to win himself a you couple bet. of Super Bowls down the road. That's... That's how talented this young man seems when you watch him. Second down and 10. Short drop, backside pressure, steps back and gets away from it. Oh, he's Houdini. He's absolutely Houdini back there in the backfield. I've never seen no, anybody never like seen this. Like and there's an old down at the 37-yard line. Nolan Seymour this time. So in the second game of ABC's wildcard playoff doubleheader, the Detroit Lions had to Washington to face Stephen Davis and the explosive Washington Redskins in game one of the NFC wildcard playoff. Live coverage at 3.30 Eastern, 1230 Pacific. Jerry, I wanted to ask you about the Detroit Lions. Uh, obviously, they come in uh, on a down note. Yeah, they, before they've gone into the playoffs in the past on a high note, it hasn't worked. Now they come in on a down note, maybe it works. I know one thing, we, and because I, I was part of it, I'm going to say we have never won at Washington. Yeah, they are like oh, exactly. and what? You're 18th? right. Oh, for as long as I can ever remember. One of the sports centers. It was though. Roland yeah. Seymour, number 56, and you're exactly white, Brent. It was a Houdini act, and Seymour sprained his ankle, I think. So we will take a break while Seymour receives attention on the field. Time out. <laughs> Inspire technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. Dodge, in a perfect world, everything would be different. New Tostito snack kits, a whole new way to dig in, kick back. And FedEx, FedEx, be absolutely sure. This is the next thing for you to Rory. Yeah, he makes Seminoles this. disappear. This is a defensive end. This is a defensive end. Florida State made this defense famous for this. Watch this. You called it a Houdini? How do you do this? It's instincts. It's savvy, and it's 4-3, uh, 220. <laughs> and Spins it's still away going. from that guy, and now watch the speed to get outside again. He runs right by Brian Allen there, another fast linebacker. Incredible. Third down and 16. Vic back again. Sets tall, deflected, almost intercepted. Derek Gibson, the rover, took a was... crap at, crack at it after the deflection, but he couldn't make the interception. But the Hokies are forced to punt. Back in the game to return another punt. 
the man, Peter Warwick, who has already returned one of them, 59 yards for a touchdown. He's also scored on a 64-yard pass play. Kibble hangs one real high. No fair catch. And going nowhere either. Good punt by Kibble and fine coverage on that at the 21-yard line. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Michael Vick has taken another stinger, but this time on his right hand, his non-throwing hand. The athletic trainer's working on it right now. So we'll take a break. So if you're left-handed and you get a hit on your right side, I guess you can live with that, but that's 18 hits on Michael Vick. If you're going to run the option, you're going to get dinged. That's why you have to be, what I say, have a gladiator physique if you're going to play this type of offense. The Knowles dash out from the sideline. Minor. And at the 24-yard line, this the play where Vic injured his hand. Let's see if we can get a close look at it. He throws the ball. It's the last play, and as he lets it go, I really don't see Kenny. You can see it. You can see him bend over, but you really don't see the hit. You just see him react to the hit. There was one time when he came to the game earlier this year without the wristband plays, so he borrowed it from the backup quarterback who happens to be right-handed. They were exactly backwards, and he ran a touchdown out of one of the plays. This time it's Dugans from Winky, and it'll be third down, and let's check in now with Lynn Swan on Seymour's injury. Well, Frank, he has a sprained right knee, and this entire preparation for this bowl game has been difficult for Seymour. He had an injured right shoulder. He suffered a little bit from the flu coming into this ball game, and now this injury. He will not come back into the game for the Seminoles. He also missed curfew and did not start the game. Played high school right here in New Orleans. Third down and eight for Winky and the Knowles. Danny Kendra directly behind him in that fullback spot. Here comes the blitz. And the penalty flags. I think it was the freshman that time, Brett Williams, number 72, that just had a little bit of a flinch. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Jack, what's up now with Vic? Well, it's the same thing, but a further update. After the trainers talked to Michael, it seems that what happened is he literally caught his hand in his wrist, the right one, between two Florida Seminole helmets. That's what caused the slight sprain. They've taped it. He's cleared to go back in. Third and 13. Timeout. Called by the Seminoles. They lead it, but things have not been going their way in the second half. Timeout. Warwick deep one-on-one -on -one over Troy. The Knowles will punt again. Anthony Midget, Mike Charlton, the two corners. Such a big part of this football game. Man-to-man -man in this defense most of the time. There's Ike Charlton. Brent, I watched two practice at Virginia Tech. This guy's like a coach on the field in practice, telling people where to go. A very valuable football player for this football team. Look at that. Returning punts now with an injury. Coach Foster and his staff have done some remarkable adjustments here defensively for the Hokies. This is the fourth punt in Florida State's last five possessions, and they force a low-line drive. Here comes Charlton. Cuts free. The heat was there, and the Hokies with excellent field position. A 24-yard return by Art Charlton. A program reminder, starting next Tuesday at 10, 9 Central, NYPD Blue. Back on ABC, the season premiere you've waited for long enough. NYPD Blue. All in the second half. Exactly right. And Florida State has done such a good job at the end of the season keeping teams from making first downs. 
Dick's going to throw back. He oh. threw high, caught by the fullback Hawkins. Hawkins all alone down the sideline and pushed out of bounds. A 26-yard play. Now, how often do we see fullbacks just slip free like this? Great call. Best call of the football game. Expecting the blitz. After a big punt return, ball in plus territory. The MO for Mickey Andrews is to come after you. You go with the throwback screen to somebody that you would never expect to get it. And there's another shot for Michael Vick. But boy, those taste good when you can put that many yards on it. Hawkins made a slick catch too, didn't he? Yep. Kendrick. Still the tailback. He pounds straight ahead. Shy of the 10-yard line. Andrews with his hands full against this redshirt freshman and unbeaten Virginia Tech now. They just did not go away even when they were down 28-7. Now you expect with a mobile quarterback to get him involved right here. Second and basically long. Instead, Kendrick attacking the middle of the Knowles defense, running right at him inside the 10, but shy of the first down. Michael Vick, you look at the Florida State defense, the last four opponents, so we're talking about third down conversions, tough to make a first down against this defense on third down. Here's where Michael Vick might be able to do his Yep. He was stop. signaling to the sideline that he wanted the boot. He was kicking his foot, trying to signal to the coach what he wanted. He wanted the boot. Let's see if he gets his call. First down marker is at the five-yard line. They need about four. He fumbles the snap. Picks it up in trouble. Rackley is coming from behind, and he dashes away from him. How's he do that? And an official is hit hard. The field judge goes down. He's knocked out on the, I shouldn't say knocked out, he was knocked down on the sideline. And he bounces back up. But did you see the speed? I, I can't, it's unbelievable. I, don't, I hope it shows up on television as well as it does when you're watching it in person right here. It was going to be the bootleg. Drops the snap. Now, when he picks it up, look at this guy run. That's the on Rackley, number five. These are parade all-american 4-4 guys and michael vick really complains about that late hit right there he was clearly out of bounds but still a tough call thomas is the defensive back who hit him this is going to be a 23-yard field goal for graham remember the last time they set up for a field goal around the i do not think this will be the option <laughs> here folks <laughs> and graham holds the hokies three points closer with a 23-yard field goal. It's 28-17 now, Florida State. points is not enough for Florida State to win this game. Taking the end, it'll come out. We want to go back on this scramble by Vic, and I want you to watch the field judge as he goes out of bounds on this play. Ben Oldham has the call. Thomas is going to hit him after he's out of bounds, but watch what happens now. Watch the official. He gets knocked askew. Might he have called it? Might he have called it if he was standing there? I can't answer that. Only Ben could be able to tell well, us. But that would have been first and goal had they called the play. Yeah, now, half the crowd thinks it was a bad call. Half thinks a good call. Exactly. <laughs> Gary, last five possessions for Florida State. 19 plays, only 46 yards. That's since they were ahead 28 to 7. Winky fires incomplete. Midget. Great hit by Midget. 
The Nokia Sugar Bowl is interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and more while you watch the game. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com right now while you watch the game. Brent, where's Peter Warren? Why can't Florida State get the ball to Peter? And Corey Moore. There he Moore, is in the slot. Corey Moore not on the field right now. He does come out during games sometimes. Shotgun. And it was four minutes. Midget diving up over the top. And Minnis makes the grab. The junior from Miami. That's his first catch of the night. Florida State not getting time to throw the ball downfield. The pass rush of the Hokies has changed the game plan now. They press at the box. Winky being blitzed. Incomplete. And the Hokies just keep turning the heat up. You talk all week that it's man-to-man -man matchups. But when you have man-to-man -man matchups, you got to make it go. You got a quarterback taking a hit, good throw to the outside. Can't come up with the catch that time, Marvin Minnis. Cottrell standing on the nose, 11-yard line. who returned two of Cottrell's punts for touchdowns in high school. Brings this one back 45 yards. Flag on the field, remember. Deep punt. First good punt by Florida State. Kind of out kicking. Look at the blocking. One right there. Here comes another one right there. Another one right there. Here it's comes against, another one right there. There is against blocks. Florida State. This is going to count. Coming right at you this time. Remember, this is the backup. This is the second punt returner. It is against Florida State. It's going to stand. And punter Keith Cottrell has to save the day, doesn't he? For the, yes. Now Michael Vick back in business. off to the right off his own lineman now gonna fire downfield incomplete at the goal line Davis the receiver Tay Cody <laughs> with covering there it is right here the shotgun here's the receiver he's gonna go to going down the field watch this a little spin wanted to go to the hook and go but not enough time now the quarterback fix just throwing it up for grabs help me help me receiver knock this baby down that's what the receiver did that time Davis comes back and makes sure it's not here so Frank's holding his heart <laughs> look at that second and ten Sean Witten in as a receiver option look Vic gonna keep it short of the first down at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the championship the two unbeatens Florida State and Virginia Tech and Tech has returned kickoffs and punts 206 yards in this game and they are hanging in the neighborhood with a big third and three inside the 30-yard line. The marker is at the 26. The pitch, Kendrick, first down, end zone ahead. Touchdown, Hokies! 29 yards! of offensive plays shotgun deep balls option power 
the whole now, package. Now they'll go for two. Trailing by five. They'd like to put it a field goal away. I know you don't. I don't like this. I like it to be a four-point game because if Florida State kicks a field goal, then it's just a seven-point game. I don't like to chase these points all game. I think Frank Beamer wanted to quickly go to work on it too, yeah. judging from what he said Watch to Vic. That's that basketball thing. You know, pick the tempo up. You're going to do this right there. The good pitch to the outside and a great cutback that time. Setting up the blockers, Hendrick comes back and cuts it up. That's exactly how the option play is supposed to work. Once he got into the secondary, Kendrick saw that goal item, took it right to the pylon. So after the return, remember it was Charlton with that fabulous punt return, giving them field position. And Frank Beamer's Hokies go 36 yards in three plays. And one other thing we can say about Virginia Tech, not only do they have an electrifying quarterback, but they have a very good coaching staff. Yeah. Bobby Bowden and the Knowles are in for the battle of their lives now. We said all week, Brent, that the longer Virginia Tech stays in the game, the pressure would shift to Florida State. First two-point conversion attempt this year. I guess when you go 11-0 and you beat everybody up, you don't have to go for two. I guess they saved a good play for this. Pick, fake the handoff. Loose, incomplete. So the two-point conversion fails, and Florida State's lead is 28-23. Going to try to hit the slant play to the left side of the field to Thomas, the outside receiver, fake it inside, hold the linebacker's picks, going to try to throw the slant right in this area right there. Doesn't have it, actually drops the ball on the play because the coverage was so good he tried to stop the throw. Unanswered points for the Hokies. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, when the Hokies tried to start to climb the mountain of Division I respectability, the coaches got together and said, we need a symbol. They came up with a simple lunchbox. The concept being, we go to work every day like a blue-collar worker. We take it one hour at a time. We bring in the hardest efforts and check in and check out. The lunchbox comes to every game. It sits here entrusted to the defense in year 2000's national championship game. And they'll go back to work, Jack. Trailing it by five. And Florida State has been unable to move the football. And I have got to go back in the second quarter when the Knowles lead at 28-7. And suddenly, Michael Vick, from out of nowhere, drives the Hokies down. Pulls them away in 14 at the end of the half. The game has not been the same since. And Maddox, the freshman, He goes as the Hokies bringing it now. Tonight's aerial facilities are provided by Nokia. Florida State has to go back to that first game plan. They got to find their All-American Peter Warwick. Heck with the trick plays, the shuffle passes. Let's find this guy right here. A little one-on-one -on -one route out there. Florida State, their last 22 plays, only 52 yards. Frankie Warwick's got it. Does a dance. And the freshman corner, we've got a penalty flag as Ronyel Whitaker, the freshman out of Norfolk, Virginia, going at it with Warwick down here. Dead ball foul might be against Peter Warwick here, huh? Could have been either one of them, the freshman or the senior. Uh, I thought, yeah, they were both sort of yep. pushing. Yep. Looks like it's going to be against the Knowles. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15 yards, the line. It will be. 
here it comes. He's open by 15 yards on this play. And at the end, tries to do two. Actually, he stepped out of bounds before. See, it's a dead ball foul, I think. And then right at the end of the play, he kind of shoves it away. Let's see if he hits him in the face. Yep, right in the face mask. I guess my only question is, should an official have stepped in when he stepped out of bounds and blown yep. the whistle and ended it Didn't right get there? quick enough, did he? So here's the play. It was a first down, a dead ball foul, so it brings it back, and the Knolls get another first down. Attempt to. Ball is inside the 20-yard line. Rinky, under pressure, goes deep, and it's intercepted at the 40-yard line by Midget. Anthony Midget, the senior from Clewiston, Florida, intercepts Winky's pass. Florida State tries to get greedy here. Keeps in the tight end, keeps in the backs here. They try to go max protection, just a two-man route. The only thing Chris Winky doesn't do is find the safety. Just throws this ball up for grabs, feels the pressure. Here comes the safety. Gets the ball. That's a critical mistake from your quarterback. Winky feels the pressure, two-man pass route on this play. You have to find the safety on this one if you're a quarterback, a young quarterback, a college quarterback, or a professional quarterback. Inexcusable. First turnover of this game by the Knowles. Virginia Tech trailing by five, but absolutely dominant in this championship game right now. And Vic goes down. <laughs> Michael Vick as he pulled away from the center, so it will be second down coming up. I want to go back to Midget right there, that young man. He's over by Lake Okeechobee out of Clewiston. His mother had just enough money to come either to his graduation or to this game. She went to the graduation. Some folks down in the Palm Beach area raised enough money to send her and a couple of her friends over to this game. They drove up from South Florida. And my, how his mom must have enjoyed that interception. Now Michael Vick on a pump fake, comes firing the screen to the fullback. First down, out of bounds, inside the 40-yard line as Cullen Hawkins, the junior from Pittsburgh, goes for 23 more yards. And look at what the Hokies have found. Ricky Bustle, you gotta give it to him. Offensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. Right now, he's in a rhythm. Gonna fake the flare screen to one side. Watch Michael Vick drop back. Fake it one way, out sneaks the fullback. And now watch the blocking here. You'll see the alley right there. Look at that, good blocking up there. It's exactly how you do it. You get those guys out there and screen the play team. Right now, Ricky Bustle's in a groove, all in place. Kendrick has his tail back, dances to the right. The 36 yard line. Very interesting moment of this football game because when we were in Tallahassee and I was speaking with Coach Bowden, I said, Bobby, if Virginia Tech stays close to you in the fourth quarter or gets ahead, I think the pressure switches over on your sideline as the favorite. Now, he quickly disagreed and said he'd been behind if Virginia Tech hadn't, but I believe it now. Second down and eight. Vic dashing back. Here he comes again. Electrifying. First down at the 20-yard line, 15 more yards, and have you ever no. seen anything like this? Bobby Rhodes, number 49 right here, is unblocked. Watch this. He can't catch him. He's a 4-6 player. Yeah, you can't catch 4-3. I've never seen a guy. Now, if Michael Vick is just a runner, he's not going to have this effect on a football game. But this package, like I said, it's the holy grail. It's what coaches are looking for. This is the holy grail of a quarterback in the next century. My, oh, my, 14 carries for 87 yards. Okay. <laughs> in trouble now. And he'll go down on the best of play at the 29 with Jamal Reynolds closing in. So the Florida State Seminoles, who once led this game, in case you just joined us, 28 to 7, you can see what they have allowed rushing. And tonight, Virginia Tech has hit them for 236 yards. 
big. 87 of those yards. Mickey Andrews has never seen an avalanche like this. There's the man. He's calm. He just looked the whole play sheet right now to the offensive coordinator. Looks like a menu at a restaurant. Pick out anything. They all taste good. Second and long. Option for Vicky Keeps it. Dashes upfield. 15-10. Near the five-yard line. It is first and goal for the amazing Vic and Virginia Tech. 22 more yards. He now is over 100 yards rushing on Brent, the day. Some good blocking going on here. Watch the pancake get these two outstanding tackles. There it is right there, number 59. Lambo just takes his man down. Vic, one side, the other side, the bootleg, the screen, the deep ball, the whole package. Anthony Lambo. First and goal. Kendrick steps to the middle. Touchdown. Hokies lead it. Hokies lead it on the six-yard run. Trailing 28-7. They come back. And Beamer says we'll try two again. of line watch this block sealing down inside Matt Lair number 69 there's that block just takes a defensive tackle Corey Simon a all-american right out of the play Nick from the shotgun with Kendrick to his left fires and away Gibson comes up to make strong defensive play but the Hokies have put 22 unanswered points on the scoreboard here in New Orleans sprint option slot option right down here at the bottom of the screen falls a little bit behind that time tapped away from Andre Davis there's no re-voting in this high school thing is there <laughs> it's done, isn't it? Well, let's go back to what Coach Bowden was talking about when they were behind. And we asked Bobby, can you come back now if you fall behind in this game? That might be one advantage we got. We've been behind a lot more than them. We've been behind. Hey, if you ain't ever been behind now, you don't know how your kids are going to play. We've been behind more than them. Bobby, I think it has been answered. They play very well. 22 unanswered points now, and Virginia Tech leads it 29 to 28. And now, doesn't Frank Beamer wish he had kicked both extra points? Absolutely. I'm always for the one point. I'm a one-point man, so it would have been 31-28. You know that. I've got more than one point. I just mean on these extra point deals, right? Exactly. Here. <laughs> no, I understand. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm kidding party. myself. You have a lot you get back into this football game now. Florida State has tried everything. Four wide receivers, two tight ends, one tight end play action pass. Don't go for the home run. Take the easy throws. Well short of the 20 yard line. The big difference in this game in the second half has been the performance of Virginia Tech's special team. They surrendered two touchdowns in the first half, in case you just joined us. One on a block punt, and the second on Peter Warwick's 59-yard return for a touchdown. That was the last Seminole score. It put them up 28-7. to Since then, Vic has gone in from three yards. Graham's kicked a 23-yarder. Kendrick has scored two touchdowns for him, and now they lead it, as you see how dominant the Hokies have become. Winking, play fake, sidearms the ball, and Warwick out of bounds. You get the feeling, you get the feeling that when we saw Bowden on the sideline next to his senior star, that he said to him, Peter, it is now time. Let's go. We don't have to get it all in one play. The front seven, though, those seven guys inside, six seniors, 17 letter winners. These guys have played a lot of football against a lot of good football teams. That's why they didn't crack at halftime. Shotgun running away in trouble. 
going to take two hits as Carl Bradley cleans up with the fourth Virginia Tech sack. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Well, Brent, one of the things I've noticed in this ball game for Florida State's offense, when they get into trouble, is not is when they don't take advantage of what the defense gives them, and they try and press. They try and force the ball into their star player, Peter Warren. They also need another receiver to pick up the slack. On their first touchdown drive of the ball game, Ron Dugan made a key first down catch that seemed to relax Peter Warren. They have to continue to play that way, then the big things will happen. It is third down and eight. They have gotten the ball to Warwick five times for 120 yards. And they fire back to Minnis in the middle. And Marvin Minnis with the first down at the 38-yard line. His second reception of the night for 19 yards. Well, Lynn was right on, and they come to Minnis. But what happened, I think, is Florida State lost a little confidence in those receivers. A couple of drops, and I think Bobby Bowden and Peter Warwick said, hey, get me the ball. I can beat him. Larry Austin replaces Charlton on one corner. And Winky, here's Bolden, the freshman, his first reception for the Knowles to the 41-yard line. Played six years, Winky did, in the Toronto Blue Jays organization before coming back to Florida State. Coach Bowden had always promised him that if he ever gave up on baseball, there'd be a scholarship waiting. And now the junior quarterback, second down and five, final seconds of the third quarter. Inside handoff. Cheney, short of the first down. Bobby Bowden with a close look at that scoreboard. As Virginia Tech at the end of the third quarter leads it 29 to 28. This is our Nokia action highlight. Michael Vick, the difference maker, and we'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. separating two unbeaten, both of them trying to go home with the Sears National Championship trophy. 29-28, Virginia Tech leads it. This is third and three. Under pressure, yeah. Winky. It'll depend on the spot. It didn't appear like he got it. Right at the Did not get it. I don't, well, let's see if the nose of that football. I might have spoken yeah. too quickly. Right at their line right there. That was Larry Austin, number 24. Neither Ike Charlton or Ronnell Whitaker, number two and number three, are in the football game. Good matchup, but a good job by Austin. Nope. Now what? Decision time for Mr. Bowden. I don't think there's any choice. He's got to go for this. He can't give that ball back to Michael Vick right now. His defense is dog tired. Here it comes. Fourth down and one. Now remember against Florida, they used two different quarterbacks to sneak rather than winking. We've got a timeout being called by Florida State. The cool one on the sideline. Go. 
led the Knowles into the championship game by beating the Florida Gators in Tallahassee is in on this fourth and short. But the Knowles burn a timeout to get there as Winky watches from the sideline. Outson, an option quarterback, has been a good runner. Virginia Tech obviously accepts pressure. They toss instead, and it's Miner running for the first down, swinging free, and he is out of bounds inside, and now the yellow comes flying along the sideline. A 16-yard run, and there may be more damage tacked on against Beamer and the Hokies. Let's sort this one out. You know, with Outson in the football game, everyone thought it was going to be the quarterback sneak. Virginia Tech slanted and pinched their lineman inside. The pitch goes out. That kind of a gamble call. Imagine, Brett, if it didn't work, we'd all be up here second guessing. But everybody's coming in expecting the quarterback sneak. See the slants? Goes outside, and Miner just outruns the quarterback again, Nick Sorensen. Don't want to pick on him, but that's the type of guy that they have to try to take advantage of. Gary, when you've coached right there and you yep, can see the uh, 15 more yards i don't mind damage. going for it on fourth down but i hate it when we burn timeouts to do it now only one left in the game for the knolls jamel smith guilty of that personal foul puts the ball on the tech 23 yard line with the first down here's mickey back in match up to the top of the screen just man the man out here off coverage mickey sees it on the outside Comes in underneath it. Jeff Cheney out of Lake Wales, Florida. Still battling his way like he did against Florida. He was a big time performer in that game in the swamp. Travis Miner injured his ankle slightly against Florida. Could not finish up and Cheney came through. That's not the case in this game. Miner's all right. The game plan was to get Cheney in. He's a good receiver as, uh-oh, Anthony Mitchell. One of the guys, Virginia Tech, they've already lost two guys I didn't think they could lose and win the football game, so I'm, I'm going to just keep quiet on this one. They might have more guys like him on the sideline. Well, we've got a moment here. Let me remind you that ABC kicks off the NFL playoffs. Bruce Smith, who was here watching his Hokies and the Buffalo Bills, head to Nashville to face the red-hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. It's game one of our wild-card doubleheader. The AFC wild-card playoff. And also, remember, we will announce the starting lineups for the 2000 NHL All-Star game during the telecast. You know, that could be an excellent playoff game when you think about Buffalo going into Nashville. The Titans have been superb at home. Tough to win going in there. Rob Johnson, the starting quarterback. That was a bit of a surprise announcement out of Buffalo. So you get a good chance. Linebacker to the outside. Winking. In zone, no. Off the hand of freshman Bolden. Threw a little bit high, and now it looks like Charlton is taking himself out of this game. He's limping off to the sideline. Now you've got both of well, their starting players. I, I would think Midget looked good enough to come back in the game. It's going to be a flat. There he is, right to the outside. A flat and up throw you think Winky should make. He's got a touchdown here. Just throws it a little too hard. Not enough air in the game on the ball. Travis Miner alongside Winky. Four wide outs. Miner slips. Goes nowhere. Third down. One thing Bowden has in his hip pocket is a Janikowski field goal down here if they don't turn it over, at least would for the moment. Yes. Gain them a two-point lead. But Rick and the Knowles have got to be thinking we need some oh, touchdowns absolutely. against Vic. It's a dangerous time, third and long, this close to the goal line. But on the other hand, Virginia Tech has both of their starting corners out of the game right now. Charlton and Midgen are in. Number two, Whitaker. Number 24, Austin, are playing man-to-man -man against these no receivers. They bring in tight end Ryan Sprague and fullback Dan Kendra for some protection. They'll try to slip Miner out. They go in zone. Touchdown, Dugans. Perfect call. Ron Dugans, the senior from Tallahassee. 
young kids. They went up for the young kids. I think it's a busted assignment. You're not supposed to break down when a running back goes in motion and switch off. The corner went out for the running back, and that produced the mismatch. Here's the running back. Look at the corner go out and switch, and then you got a mismatch inside. Running back goes. You should not switch. Look at that. Two guys covering one out here. No one covering the wide receiver. It's tough to have your corners that have played all year on the sideline like that. Big, big difference, Carter. Now it's the Knowles' turn to go for two. And I don't like it here either. <laughs> <laughs> You're consistent. Exactly. I'm going to give What's you. wrong with a six-point lead? <laughs> and now Virginia Tech burns a timeout. So we'll take a break. 12.59 to go, and the Knowles are back in the lead. Every morning, the... Louisiana Superdome and not many folks heading for the exits on this one. It has been a dandy. 12.59 to go. This is the two-point conversion. After the pass from Ricky to Dugans, put the nose back in the lead for the deuce. Got it. Warwick. Florida State. Recaptures the lead, 36-29, as against a battered secondary. Peter Warwick slips free for the two-point conversion. Timeout. I'm going with extra pickles. Pickles? I hate pickles. Onions rule, man. Give me extra onions, no tomatoes. Tomatoes are key. I mean, pickles and tomatoes. State finally on the board in the second half. They march 85 yards in 11 plays, 4 minutes and 14 seconds. Emphasis on the battle. It's not coming easy, either one of these teams. Michael Vick, out of Newport News, Virginia. Can you imagine how good a pitcher he was in high school? How would you like to have stepped in against his fastball when you're a 13-year-old youngster, the way he brings it? Now let's see if Janikowski can bring the kickoff. Not sure the Knowles have been overly happy with him so far today. At the goal line, Kendrick. Left return, surrounded. Now let's go back to his days in high school, where he was described as a young Randall Cunningham. That's Remember him in Ronald the Florida Curry? State. Yeah. <laughs> wearing their colors back in high school. You see where he thought he was stopping? He was yeah, dancing yeah. around in those days. Unbelievable. Folks, he's 6'1", 215 pounds, runs the 40 at 433, benches 320, squats 500, and he's got a 40-inch vertical leap. And on top of all that, he played in the shadow of Ron Curry in Virginia at that time. I think that helped his resolve to be a good football player. On the run, Juggled out of Davis's hand. Couldn't hold on. So it is our AT&T game summary of this battle for a championship with Peter Warwick, the most celebrated shopper since Imelda Marcos, with five receptions for 120 yards and a touchdown. I knew you'd catch that. I got it. I was I was reading instead of listening. That's always a mistake. Vic, 249 all-purpose yards. Also not on there. The two key injuries in the game, Ricky Hall and Chiron Smith still. From the gun. Inside shovel pass. Kendrick for the first down. Derek Gibson. 
to stop after a gain of 12 yards. Now, Virginia Tech's possessions here half. in the second half. What a second half. One punt, and they caught their second win. Field goal first, and then it's momentum all the way. They've been feeling it. Ricky Bustle, the coordinator, has been able to call plays. Anything he grabs right now, he feels good with. Four wide receivers. I bet this is going to be some kind of quarterback draw. Takes the inside handoff and then did take off on a quarterback draw. To the fumble! Knowles! Florida State football inside the 35-yard line. He's only made a couple of mistakes in this football game. Turning the wrong way on the goal line is a perfect call again. Quarterback draw off of the fake. Here he comes. Got the ball kind of waving a little bit. Coming from behind. Is it Pocus? Yes. It's the helmet that time. Bobby Rhodes from behind. Really didn't go for it. Actually just diving on the play from behind. Doesn't quite get to the quarterback in his helmet. Gets right on the football. One of the Sean interesting... Key recovers it. Excuse me, Brent. One of the interesting things... Is... Gibson, the rover, down on the field. So we'll take a break. 11.58 to go. Michael Vick. First down and 10 for Florida State with 11.58 left in the battle for the BCS National Championship and medical attention over there on the sideline for Derek Gibson. Cheney still in as the Florida State running back with the first call. Steps lively out to the right with a quick first step. Breaks free. Out of bounds. Inside the 10-yard line. <laughs> Bobby Bowden going back to his roots a little bit. I formation running the tailback. Cheney comes in years ago. This used to be the Florida State offense. I formation, play action passes. No one has changed better as the game has changed than Bobby Bowden. Now it's Travis Minor. Talks to him. Kendra leads him. And he stopped at the 10 yard line. Michael Hawks, the inside linebackers out of Blackstone, Virginia. Senior, playing in his last game here for the Hokies. This man has done a fine job, and he sure is a nice man to be around. First time I'd had any opportunity to talk or spend any time with his coaching staff, and he strikes me as so down to earth. And there's Coach Foster, who simply one of the best, in case you just joined me. That's yeah, the man that Steve Spurrier wanted to get when Bob Stoops became the head coach at at Oklahoma, and he decided to stay loyal to Frank Hill. Jeff Cheney back on the field. Play fake in trouble, steps away from Moore, and now Winky throws it away in the middle of the field. No one there. Not even a receiver. I wonder if the tight end was knocked down on that. I think they were trying to go to Peter Warwick, and it was bracketed by Virginia Tech. You see Frank Beamer. He said, we got one like that early. Chris Winky was just trying to get rid of it. Peter Work bracketed to the outside. He wanted to go slant corner to the top of the screen top and nothing there. Good defense. Right here, here's the end of the play. Trying to go to work all the way. Everybody else is staying in. Feels the pressure. Doesn't really even look. Just turns around and throws it. That's grounded. Third down and goal. Set the screen, Cheney in trouble. Penalty flag. Thrown at the nine yard line. 
up against Bowden boys. But you think about these two coaches, the one thing they share in common is loyalty with their assistant coaches. Both of these staffs have been in the respective places. Against the offense, penalty has declined, fourth down. Janikowski tied. And there is Coach Foster, both, the defensive coordinator. Yes, both Bud Foster and Ricky Bustle have been with Frank since 1987. Ricky Bustle left for a year but came back. Bud Foster's been there the entire time. And 10 yards. 32 yards for Sebastian Janikowski. Who knows? Maybe that was his last field goal for Florida State. Remember, he's going to turn professional, needs the money to bring his mother Helena over from Poland. Time out. Play to Lynn Swan. Well, guys, Mickey Andrews is the defensive coordinator for the Seminoles, and he keeps going up against Ricky Bustle's offense. He's the offensive coordinator. They go way back. Ricky Bustle was a defensive assistant under Mickey Andrews at Clemson in 1977. But in 1983, they both ended up in Phoenix coaching the USFL team, the Wranglers. What happened was they hired Ricky Bustle. When they hired Mickey Andrews, they took Bustle and moved him to the offensive side, and that began his offensive career. Mickey right now is probably wishing, why did he leave the defense? Yeah, I would say. Right? There's Janikowski oh, pounding this one. That's what we expect. That's halfway to war, so. I don't know why. It's now just getting to be Janikowski time. It's getting late at night now, see? He's used to being out this late. <laughs> that's right. See, that's the international rule right. that Coach Bowden was preaching. He was out I this I want this time. man to be ready near midnight Eastern time. You bet. He's just getting his legs. <laughs> they tell me, folks who saw him play soccer over in the Daytona Beach area, they tell me he was a whale of a soccer player. He'd move around, very athletic, and... Uh, <laughs> So anybody needs a field goal kicker in the NFL, you got to think about Sebastian, and you'll get a character along with it. Let me tell you that. First down and ten. Here's the end around with Andre Davis, the speedster, trying to get him some running room. First down and a gain of 16 yards with Bradley Jennings coming from behind to make a pretty good lick on it, huh? Davis has had the one big catch. Scored two touchdowns this year on reverses, but that was a good start of the series for Virginia Tech. Take your time, 10 minutes to go in this football game. No reason to go too fast. Put a touchdown on, put the pressure back on the Nolans. First down and 10. Vic in trouble. Brian Allen makes the stop in a uh, program reminder that Sunday Dorothy Hamill leads a team of USA's elite against the world's best. Michelle Kwan, Todd Eldridge, Elvis Stoiko. They'll put their reputations on the ice at the Kerry Lotion USA versus the World Figure Skating Challenge. Sunday at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific. It's all part of Super January on ABC. And of course, it'll all culminate with the Super Bowl down in Atlanta. Got a chance for some fresh faces this year, don't we? Indianapolis. Playing very well under Jim Moore. Second down. Kendrick. And you would have to think, Gary, and it would certainly be understandable if Michael Vick were just a little bit tired. You know, I, I know he's, yeah, he's 19 years hits. old. But yeah, you run as much. Now, we're, you just count his yards he's rushed for. All the scrambling he's done behind the line of scrimmage has to take his toll. But remember, keep thinking back to that West Virginia game. When it was on the line, he had that tank ready to go and make plays at the end of the game. Yeah, that, that saved their season, you bet.
Third down and eight. And Vic tried to dance for Corey him. He's Simon. found it with Corey Simon, the All-American nose guard, the first to hit him. Jerry Johnson inside, the tackles. Now there, folks, they're <laughs> looking for the fairgrounds. They came in here to the wrong arena. So we've got some security down there. 8.17 to go. I don't know about Michael Vick running out of gas, but it's, that was the first time I've seen the defensive line for Florida State dominate the offensive line for Virginia Tech. No one blocked anyone in that series. Hit a Warwick, and it's a fake. Sorensen, short of the first down. With 7.55 to go, Frank Beamer and the Hokies let it all hang out on a fourth down gamble. See, I don't mind that one. I think it, it's worth it. Seven, eight minutes to go in the game. You're down 10 points. I mean, why leave it in the bag, right? Let's go for it. Try to get the win. Sorensen, right? There it is. There's the ex-quarterback. Direct snap. Option play again. Cuts up field. Perfect play to the outside that time. Gets it. Goes as far as he can and doesn't get it. 7.52 to go. And the Knowles, 44 yards away. Well, remember, we talked about it early when Florida State has the football, the Dell game solution. Let's see what's happened. Spread out and play one. It's it's worked for a while, but not, not as big. Travis Miner hasn't done much, and the hide, hinder, and hit has not really worked. It seems to me that Chris Winkie has known what the defenses are. They haven't hindered the pass routes. It's been more the pass rush than the secondary coverage that has been the story of the defense for Flor for Virginia Tech. I'm going to take everybody back to the first half. Two huge plays on the special teams. Difference makers. Gave the Seminoles a big edge. The blocked punt by Pulley. Chaney scored. And then it was Warwick on the punt return. 59 yards for the score. And so a team celebrated for its special teams, gives up two touchdowns. One more look, the end of this play, Nick Sorensen goes all the way through it, kind of gets sandwiched in there, and then the last thing that hits the ground is his head with the helmet. I wonder if he's a little bit shocked by that play with his head hitting the ground. Looked to me like two helmets hit him from the right side and the left side. Might have got him in the ribs. You know, we've talked so much about Sebastian Janikowski. We did ask him, why do you want to turn professional next year after your junior season? I mean, I could come back for my senior year just to stay, you know, help those guys, help the team do what I do. But who I talk to my parents and my mom is really important to me. So I can send her some money, you know, help her out or either bring her here or just live with me. Yeah, that's a great thought. Here's Winky. Going deep. Warwick's all alone. Penalty flags down. Touchdown. Touchdown. Florida State. 43 yards. And Peter Warwick, a night of redemption, his third touchdown of this championship game. The reason why he came back as a senior, he told us, was to win a ring and a championship trophy. Held to only one catch last year by Tennessee. Danielle Whitaker, the freshman, was matched up. The ball was underthrown, and the All-American made the play. Interference called. He still came up with the catch. Janikowski. Trots back onto the field. The highest scoring Sugar Bowl of all time. He's going to go down to the record books in the BCS championship game. One on one. Everybody in the stadium knew it was going to be one on one. Right here. Here's number two, the freshman. The All American is just straight down the field. Play action pass. Winky throws it too late, does not throw it far, far enough. Watch, work has to reach back, gets hit, ball bobbles, and he makes the catch. Great concentration. 
interference would have been called. Remember, college, it would have been just a 15-yard penalty. Look at that concentration from Peter Warwick. Cleveland Brown fans, are you watching? Is this the guy you take? Give Tim Couch some firepower. You know, I leave a little bit to LeVar Arrington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. You bet. story is Chris Winkley in this football game since the interception when he went, didn't look off the safety eight for ten two touchdowns made a mistake very similar to a year ago when he had that interception game against North Carolina State he went on to finish off the seed today he throws the interception comes back two touchdown passes Chris Winkley to that man right there Peter Ward Well, as you all know, the celebrated situation involving Peter Warwick suspended a couple of games. His teammate and friend, Lavernius Coles, kicked off of the team. And I asked Peter Warwick, what have you learned from this year? I know I messed up, true indeed. But, you know, I learned from my mistakes, and I feel like God has a better plan for me. And, you know, it's time for me to just move on and not worry about what I did and just worry about what I have to do. The plan tonight... Six catches, 163 yards, and three touchdowns. One on a punt return and two receptions. Vic in trouble. That's the fifth sack of the game against a young man who we will be hearing an awful lot about in the next couple of years. Not the type of game, obviously, throughout the whole year this year, Michael Vick only threw 17 or more passes in three games, and usually when he was throwing, they were ahead. They threw when they wanted to throw, not in this situation. Wearing down, but he gave us a great show, didn't he? Sure did. That offensive line's wearing down, too. He waited with Mickey Andrews and Coach Bowden and the rest of them start talking about this young man after the game and, and the nerves that were there on the Florida State sideline. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, the much, much heralded defense for the Virginia Tech Hokies is being decimated. Nick Sorensen is out for the rest of the game with a concussion, and Ike Charlton, well, the problem with Charlton on the offensive side of the ball is the fact that they've asked him to go in, and he says, I'm still cramped up. He's been back here, and he refuses to go back in, and he still hurts. Jack Michael Vick's pass is knocked away. You can just sort of in the building, and I'm sure many of you watching on television now, you can feel the noose tightening around a young man who gave us a, a spectacular performance. I would vote for him clearly as the MVP of this game, even Absolutely. if he doesn't win it. I think it's been unbelievable. I mean, tonight. Peter Warwick has a claim, but uh, it is, he kept his team in. I mean, this is a team that is not in this football game without that guy right there. Literally in this game or in the game, both ways. And look who's back, set to return a punt. And Virginia Tech is going to call a timeout. Peter Warwick out there at the 45-yard line. Because already tonight, Peter Warwick with three touchdowns. The 64-yard reception. The punt return. And finally, the dagger. Peter Warwick. That little trouble cost him the Heisman and the Bolitnikov. And one of the things he wanted to show tonight is that he feels he is the best receiver in college football today. I think he is. Maybe more than that, he wants to show he's the best player in college football today. He might have a legitimate argument about that. A lot of good ones. Number seven's got a good argument. Number 33 of Wisconsin does, too. And and your man, and everybody else is really, Lamar Eric is not a bad football player. A lot of good stories developed yes. this year, didn't they, in they college really football? You know, and this BCS thing's working pretty good. I hate, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's two pretty good games here. I it's say. a good football game. 
was short on the punt. It's going to take a Florida State hop in down around the 40 yard line. And so tonight's aerial facilities provided by Nokia here at the Nokia Sugar Bowl, the Finnish telephone company that has done so well over the last decade. And alongside where they play basketball and minor league hockey, you can see the New Orleans Arena right there where they sold tickets to this overflow crowd. They went inside to watch the game on the big screen. Folks over there, I hope you enjoyed the action tonight. It has been a wonderful football game. 6-11 to go. The highest scoring Sugar Bowl of all time. Florida and Florida State had put 72 on the board. And this was dead. Chaney slipping down. Brent, you get to this point in the game now with six minutes, you look at Chris Winkie. Now he'll be if he winning this game, and he, and he should win it, obviously. 21-1 and one as a starter, 27 years old. Brent, in the National Football League this year, 22 different starting oh, quarterbacks who are younger than Chris Winkie is right now. He has not announced whether he's turning pro, but I think it's, in my opinion, he needs to move on. I think he's good enough to play at the next level. Got a good arm. I think it's time. I think Michael Vick's ready to play. <laughs> the next level, but it's not legal. <laughs> Second down at 13. Here's Cheney. Let's go down below to Lynn Swan. Lynn? Well, Brent, the Sears National Champion Trophy since its inception in 1993. Counting the Sugar Bowl has been at 50 different sites. And the first team to win this trophy? Florida State Seminoles, and they are obviously trying to make sure that they are the first team in the 21st century to also win this trophy. Just a sidebar, the person who owns this company, Waterford that makes a crystal, Dr. Anthony O'Reilly, actually won the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy while he was a student at Oxford. Brent? Thank you, Lynn. way again knocked away play. the freshman Whitaker he showed some speed there Whitaker just a freshman came from behind that ball was better thrown than the last one Florida State coaches thought that maybe just maybe this young man's one of their better defensive uh, I, backs I don't think there's any doubt he's got the potential to be he runs well he was their third defensive back in all season this time and he's got the speed that they look for it was one-on-one -on -one coverage too. No help all over the field. Control. Nobody back. They come out on the 20-yard line. You look at Bobby Bowden's 23 years, and he has never been unbeaten. They have lost every time out, but tonight, Coach Bowden appears headed for his first ever unbeaten season and his second national championship. When you go back and take a look at Bobby Bowden, by the numbers, it is just unbelievable. 13 straight seasons. 10 or more wins. Michael Victor Davis. And he is dropped by Thomas. Let me remind you folks that the uh, network will kick off the NFL playoffs. The Buffalo Bills go to Nashville to face the Red Hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. Game one of our wild card doubleheader, the AFC wild card playoff. Coverage begins at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. There's the inside shovel pass to Kendrick. And you know, as I look at Michael Vick, I am uh, just reminded by our folks down the truck that Steve Young is going to join our pregame show on Saturday. And I got to tell you, looking at Vick, he's got a little bit of Steve Young in him. And uh, Steve, I don't know if you ever ripped like he was. But, no, uh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and maybe a... a, a, a Tenth of a second faster in the 40, and Steve yeah. was probably as fast as they went as a quarterback. Vic is back. Complete. 
First down, Virginia Tech, 338, and Emmett Johnson for 23 yards that time. Florida State is conceding yards now for time off the clock. Brent, you told the story about Bobby Bowden. I mean, this is a guy who came to Florida State, found a home, and really built a dynasty. This is a dynasty now. There's no doubt about that. The way this team has played in college football, the way parity has gone to have the record he has, he's attracting the top talent in the country. And Bick fires again. This one to Davis. Getting to the corner, trying to get it turned, but Gibson would not let him free. 23 more yards, however, and the heart the Hokies demonstrated in here is something because Florida State had them down and almost out of the first half when it was 28-7. Back came Michael and the Hokies. They put on the show. Took the lead in the third quarter. Even without their best running back, Stith, who went out with an injury. Then finally, Mickey Andrews and the Knowles defense settled things down out there. The offense did the rest. Peter Warwick for another touchdown. 46-29. And the Hokies drive it right back down the field. For the end zone, incomplete, but a penalty flag is thrown. Tay Cody, number 27 that time, had his man wrapped up. Back to Michael Vick again. I mean, you, you see the penalty. It's going to be holding against Florida State. During the pass, holding on the defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. One of the great moves that Virginia Tech did a year ago was to redshirt this guy. Remember? Al Clark was even injured. The temptation was to put him in the football game. But Frank Beamer said, no, I'm going to wait for 1999 season. And it has paid off in a run for the national championship. Red shooting Michael Vick was the best thing that ever happened to him. And on first down, Vick fires incomplete, and it was a second down. Virginia Tech has enjoyed that magical season. They were forced to the wall by West Virginia. Got hit by two guys on this one, I believe. At least two were coming at him. Shotgun gets rid of it quick, throws it. Boom, there's one, there's two coming from two sides that time. Good dad. Take the lot to keep this guy in the game, isn't it? It's amazing. Like I think the clock uh, was running and it wasn't supposed to be running is what happened is the uh, Virginia Tech sideline exploded. Of course, Coach Bowden said, come on, run that. That can't be fast enough for me. Let me get out of here away from that number seven. It's an incomplete pass. Let's get some, let's get some seconds back on it. Uh, you know, I've got a moment here. There are so many folks I want to thank who've made our lives so much easier this year. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. The executive producer, Jimmy Lakata, assistant to the producer, ZNX, Drew Kaliski, and Larry Tiscornia. The computer stats, Craig Rothberg. Thanks to one and all who have helped us second down now for Michael Vick 240 to go in this game Vick runs daylight and down at the five-yard line and of course finally thanks to our stats man Roger Riley and our spotter all season long Brian Mobleson it has been a fabulous college football season and it has all come down to Mr. Bowden here 13 straight years among the Associated Press's top four. Played for the national championship three times in the last four years. And in 24 years, folks, he's had only one losing season in Tallahassee. That was his first when they went five and six. Vic firing, caught, and driven out of bounds at the three-yard line. Forward progress stopped right there, and they continue to wind the clock with Andre Davis. Going out of bounds. Wonderful family man, been a friend for a long time. Says he has no thoughts about retiring. 
He and his lovely wife, Ann, six children, 21 grandchildren. I think all six are here tonight. Well, why should you do interviews while your team runs a flea flicker? <laughs> <laughs> it's easy, right? You know, he's a little hoarse from all the interviews he did. <laughs> oh, my God. Can't oh, it was a quip a minute. He he's, really he's the best interview this side of my friend Joe Paterno. Here's Vic. Going down now. 12-yard line. That's the seventh sack. Bradley Jennings pouring in on him again. First time Michael Vick towards the end of this football game. He's gotten frustrated with the offensive line. He's trying to get it to the outside right here. Florida State brings everybody. No blocking. Peeling defensive end right there. Took away his throw. That's a technique that is often used by Florida State. Blitz inside, peel the defensive ends. Vic had nowhere to go with the football. And here comes the Schwappa. You bet. <laughs> you know, Bobby, too old for that. That's what he's thinking. I am playing one of those baths. And still wants to get back out there and keep on flinging. You get the feeling he'll be back. Yeah, I think this was a much cleaner play game than a year ago in the national championship. Both staffs have come to understand the long layoff and getting their team ready. Well, this is an honor they could not take away from Peter Warwick, the MVP of the BCS championship game. Peter Warwick, who was denied the Heisman, denied the Bolitnikoff, steps up at center stage for a national championship, the game he came back to win after being held to one pass last year in the desert. And he is our most valuable player in this game. Six catches for 163 yards and two touchdowns there, and then a 59-yard punt return for a third touchdown. So you talk about most valuable, and you got to start with Peter Ward. They... Well, the first champion of the 21st century, and it's a familiar face over there, Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. It took Bowden 24 years, but he finally got it perfect. And now one of the genuine good guys can enjoy his second national championship as he wins the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. The Seminoles are champions, 46 to 29. Coach Frank Beamer and his Hokies showed a lot of heart in their comeback, but they came up short, and he'll go over to congratulate Coach Bowden. One stat that Virginia Tech will go home and think about. Corey Moore tonight was held to one tackle. They lose it. The presentation is coming up next here on ABC. team in college football history to go wire to wire. Preseason number one stayed that way throughout the entire season. Other teams have dropped and then come back to be number one at the end of the season. Florida State the first team to do it from the first week of the season to the last week of the season and you know what a special moment this is for your dad. Oh it sure is. Last year last year at the championship game I didn't see that gotta have it attitude in his eyes. This year he was hungry. You could sense it. He was almost desperate and attitude starts at the top and those players Players sensed it, and those players played like they had to have that championship too. When you talk about the players, obviously a huge night for Peter Warwick. He gets the MVP, but you cannot say enough about Michael Vick. 
I tell you, Peter Ward did an outstanding job. He's a great player. He made big play after big play. And when they were down, they had to lift. I saw my father go to the sideline and say, Peter, make a play. And he did. Michael Vick could have been the MVP tonight, too. But Peter, Peter Ward is the man of the hour. He had the punt return for a touchdown. Six receptions, 153 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And this is why Peter Ward came back to win a national championship. And in a season where he really struggled with the off-field difficulties, it's really nice to see a guy come back, paid his dues, missed the two games, lost the Heisman Trophy. Nice to see him come back with a great performance. And you know what? And he's always had a special relationship with my father. Peter Wark and my father have always had that special relationship. And I think they're going to be best friends probably for the rest of their lives. It's an amazing victory. 46 to 29. Florida State national champions in this 99-2000 season. Let's go back down to the field and join Lynn Swan. Now on the center of the field, let me introduce the president of Nokia Sugar Bowl Committee, Miles Clements, who will make the trophy presentation. Thank you, Lynn. On behalf of the 100 volunteer members of the Nokia Sugar Bowl, I take great pride in congratulating the players and coaches, the fans, the alumni, and the supporters of Florida State University. for the perfect ending to a perfect season. Coach Bowden. Coach Bowden, you have taken the Florida State Seminoles through an undefeated 1999 season into the 21st century and the national championship of college football. Let me now introduce from Nokia, Vice President Matt West to present the Nokia Sugar Bowl Championship Trophy. And now to present the Sears National Champion Trophy, please welcome Senior Vice President of Marketing, David Selby. David. Coach, on behalf of the more than 300,000 Sears Associates and the American Football Coaches Association, it is my extreme pleasure to present you with the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. To you, your fans, your coaches, your team, and Seminole fans everywhere, congratulations on a perfect season, on a wonderful, wonderful performance this evening, and for your second national championship and second Sears Trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. Please pick it up. It's just right here. Now, now Bobby, you've never been short on words, but before we hear from you, I'm going to ask Larry Paulson, Vice President and General Manager of Nokia, to present the MVP trophy first to Peter Ward. Did you have the what there? Another Liam Swan. I think Peter's a little faster than I am, Coach. He played great. Coach, this is your first undefeated team. You certainly deserve this moment to tell everyone how you feel about that and how you got that team here. 